Mm. And we are live. <clears throat> Love Let's it. do this. <laughs> What's cracking, man? What's cracking? What's cracking? All sorts, bro. All sorts. I think this, this week's been a good week. I've, yeah. uh, I, I think I told you last time, I was coaching with Nick Daniel. Yeah. And um, it's like training's been much more consistent. Not, not, not that it wasn't consistent, but it was like, Remember how, remember how when we started off training and we, um, we, I kind of set you the plan and then it was like, okay, let's, let's use it. And you took it on yourself and Sam did this thing really, really well as well, which was, he was like, okay, I'm just going to break into the plan really slowly. I'm mm-hmm. not going to go into the gym and try and PR and kill myself. So, cool. so like if it was, if it was set, if, if the, if the program he set to me was like, okay, six sets, I'm going in for the first week, I'm going to do in like three, I'm doing four maybe. And mm. uh, the weight, like the first set, I'd do it like body weight. If it's like a set of like zercher carries or like or like lunges, zercher carry lunges, like that, that's that's one of the first exercises in the program. I would do it like body weight, and then I would just do the movement, and then that the next set I would add load it tiny tiny bit. So uh, that was kind of the first two weeks, and then the third week, which is this week, I've uh, I've loaded it a bit heavier and kind of like see the differences, and you just you just feel the the uh, physiology kind of like tightening up around. The movement as opposed to like going in there day one trying to pr and trying to kind of kill yourself which yeah. uh which is interesting because i think a lot of people on the back of the gym gyms opening up again will like rush back in have no respect for where their body's been for the last kind of what couple of months really if you mm. come out of lockdown it's a long time they'll have uh, no real understanding about that and then just kind of rush in kind of hurt themselves it's like come on now you finally get your gym back again and uh you're gonna mess yourself up like day one you don't need that that's a fair point. That's a, yeah, that's a legit point because you just like uh, people wanting to get right back into things and just like take off where where they left off as well. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not going to be that way. You're going to have to pick yourself back up, especially if you just uh, really regress the routine right, right down uh, during the during the lockdown phase. <clears throat> too right, man. Too right. And I, th- I think it's um, it's, it's Dominic Cruz. You, you heard Dominic Cruz, the UFC fighter. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's talking about how he's um, he's he's had some crazy injuries, and he kind of. He, he, he's, I think he's ACLs in his knees or whatever and um, like his, his footwork's ridiculous right so um, his, yeah. his legs just take a battering and I think he'd, he'd done one of his ACLs and he had like I think the second time or whatever he tells it on the Joe Rogan podcast and um, he goes from from basically doing nothing for nine months and that was that was the ACL kind of like uh, recovery period that he was given from the doctors and um on the nine month mark like dana white and sean shelby basically ring him up and say oh look you're clear you're cleared by the doctors now can you fight in in three weeks in, th- in three months sorry so he gets booked into a title fight with tj dillashaw in three months time i was listening yeah. to this like last week and like he's done nothing for nine months and he goes fight straight into fight camp like straight into fight camp to fight tj dillashaw like the world champ at the time yeah and he ends up he ends up developing plantar fasciitis in both his feet like mm. both of his feet to the point where he tears the plantar fascia in the both of both feet in the bottom of both feet, and um, he ends up like having to crawl out of bed in the morning while doing a fight camp because his feet are just ruined, and he's mm. just fixed his ACL. It's like don't don't be that guy going from zero to a hundred. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> exactly. He says it himself. He's like, <clears throat> I, was, I was an idiot. You know what I mean? I, I thought I could do it, and uh, you pay for it afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah, even when you're a pro level athlete, you still can't go zero to hundred, right? No, man, you got to respect the body, right? You got to respect all the all the different uh, systems at play. Yeah, I think that's yeah. that's, a, that's that's a phrase I'm going to steal from Jordan Shallow. Like um, I told you last time, I was doing this uh, this 16 week course from him, and yeah. uh, dude, like second second uh, lecture in, and I think I've taken like 18 pages worth of notes. Wow. <laughs> just like typing my ass up, like listen to it and just type it. <laughs> and then uh, I'm amazed, like I'm really happy about this because he sends out the the lecture recording on the on the Thursday night. So you mm. get it. You do. I do my mine is on my group is on the Tuesday. I was booking for the Tuesday one, and then by the Thursday you get it. And then um, what was I going to say? Yeah, yeah. And then I've, uh, I've, you kind of rewatch the lecture and take more notes on it. And uh, mm. some of the things he's on about in terms of like subsystems of the body and how they integrate and how we've got to respect all of them in, uh, yeah. in our training and kind of not really be stuck in one modality of training. I really think it's uh, it's definitely gonna, it's definitely changing my approach on, in terms of how I program for clients, how I think about myself. Definitely looking mm. back, we touched on this last time about um, kind of being stuck in old ways and almost using new new um, knowledge. To be like oh yeah i have progressed i have kind of like come a long way but now i feel like this is the next step you know what i mean yeah yeah, yeah for sure man. 
I agree, man. System of systems. That's what the body is. It's like uh, Kelly Starr put that put it that way. <clears throat> he was okay. the first person who put it that way, and I was like, "That's a really good, succinct way of putting it." And because uh, at the end of the day, that's what the whoop has been good for as well, right? Is just mm-hmm. making you understand that your physiology is more than you just uh, just busting out some reps, basically, because you feel like you have to. It's like you got to respect where you're at and and adjust accordingly. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, that's legit, man. That's true, man. That's true, and it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot of like mental state at the same time as well with with training, especially. You can yeah. kind of be all hyped up and be ready for it, and you just your body's just not there. You, you need yeah. to build up slow and kind of respect that. You know what I mean? Yeah, completely, man. I'd say that was that was me today. That was like uh, wake like waking up in the morning. I was like, okay, there's a few things I want to do today. Definitely want to get some training in, <clears throat> and I just thought, okay, it's going to have to be in the first part. I didn't even think it was going to be the first part of today. It was mm-hmm. I thought maybe I'll do it in the afternoon, maybe I'll do it after WeChat. But then uh, I was like kind of getting into a bit of a zone where I was like, actually, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that if I don't do it now, I'm not going to do it <laughs> for the rest of the day. Yeah. So I just kind of gradually G'd myself up for it where I was like doing my normal movement routine in that um, just like getting getting myself feeling good, uh, pre- prepped, primed for the day, body feeling like it's been taken care of. And then I just went, you know what? I'm going to train now. I have to because if I don't do it now, I'm going to be agitated that I haven't done it later. But it was taking time to get into the zone. So I kind of used the training to build the mm. the, uh, the the mental state as well. It was like, okay, come on, use it, use it. Let's push, let's push, let's push, or let's, uh, let's just get through this. And then while I was in that phase, it was just like, uh, yeah, just building up the mindset as well, building up the mentality as well, which – now I feel great, you know, but going into it, I was kind of like, I was a little bit frustrated just thinking, where am I going to train? Is it going to be right? Um, I don't feel like I'm in the right headspace for it, but then screw it, just just do it and then build, build, build. And that finished it. And at the end of it, I was like, you know what? I'm primed. I'm done. I'm good. I'm ready for the rest of the day. And it was, uh, yeah, it was kind of like uh, what you said last week is like the day you don't feel like going to the gym is the day you have to go to the gym. Mm-hmm. It's the day you should go because that's where you're going to see most of the gains. And uh, today was one of those days. It was like, it's not that I wasn't going to go. It was just like, I feel like uh, it just felt like it wasn't going to happen. It just, it was one of those things where for whatever reason, it just, uh, I needed to get myself in the state to do it. But then I actually used the thing I needed to do to get myself in the state. You know what I mean? It's like if getting started gets you in the state rather than thinking I need to get into the state to get started. Mm. So that's what I, uh, uh, that's what was uh, was positive about uh, that that training that training today. Just using it to build myself up. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That's a, it. Reminds me of a, a Ralph Waldo Emerson quote. This is from right. Elliot. You heard of Elliot Hulse? Yeah. Yeah, strength camp, sick guy. Like I mean, everyone, everyone on YouTube has got to have seen Elliot Hulse videos. Such a cool guy. And yeah. uh, the quote is, "Do the thing to have the power." It's it's like it's super simple, right? It's super simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you need to work out, work out. Like you need yeah, to figure out it. the mental state. Okay, well, have a sentence that you read, and and that that puts you in the right mental state. And I think it's all about. Um, I I almost want to develop this for myself, where uh, the way I envision it is is having like a paragraph that I read, and I have a few notes saved on my phone as as like my why. The the title of my notes is like my why, and mm. I'll go into that, and I'll be like, okay, right, well, I want to appease the fact that I have good genetics you know what i mean so i can't waste this opportunity or i have like an opportunity that somebody else won't have you know what i mean there's this kid on the other side of the world who will never understand what it's like to have a home gym you know what i mean or have like the knowledge or have have it, all, all all the things running water you know what i mean like you can run it all the way back down to the things we're little the little things we're grateful for but almost like make the sentences like succinct and clear to the point yeah. where this is really pertaining to me and like right now and the fact that i have to make good on this next hour of work hour of time sorry make it as effective as possible get yourself really like straight into that mindset as quickly as you can sometimes obviously i think you'll need the day where you have to put on some eric thomas quotes and you have to like uh get pumped up and put put some dmx on you know what i mean like some days you gotta do that but i think some days you just roll out of bed it's there um but the fact is i think you just have to do it every day like you can't you can't yeah. there's no days off you know what i mean like uh um this is this is from uh have you heard of matt ogus no he's like an og fitness youtuber like really cool guy like super okay. clever 
um yeah he 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 posted once he was like the book of grind has no missing pages right like so you you can't like just just want to be that guy and then just have those days off you know you got you got to figure out how to get yourself there um 24 7 man yeah sick i like that man and then actually when you Yeah. How's that, man? You hear me? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah, good, good. I was going to say, that Eric Thomas. Uh, I'm so glad you sent me that one video, man. That oh Eric yeah. Why do you want to be a beast? <laughs> and that gets, that gets me that as well. So yeah. I had to listen to that this morning. Oh um, shit! Nice. Before I started training, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm ready now, man. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna go down because there's that that slip. It's the last two minutes of that five minute clip that you sent, which I resonate with hard. Where he's just like, you gotta love the process. Yeah, the yeah. process. <laughs> that's the one. Man. That's the one. I was like, that's the shit, man. Because it's true. You gotta love the process. If you ain't love the process, you ain't getting where you want to be. So yeah. I listen to that, and that just gets me ready every time, man. It's and uh, yeah, that's it. Do the th- was it? Do the thing that has that gives you power. Do the thing to have the power. Do the thing. Do the to thing have to have the power. The power. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's um, that's for sure true for me. Training, and then there's a couple other things in there as well. Like, uh, what's, what's that entail for you, those those things? I think just having that mental conversation with yourself mm. and then, like, kind of – this is this is really interesting. Like, um, a friend of mine gave me a, a book once, and in the book there's there's a, there's a, a passage which talks about um, being able to look yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and mm. being like, okay, I, I, get, I get to sleep now because I've done the things I need to do in my day. And I think whatever that entails for you, whatever, whatever that entails for you, you've, you've got to, you've got to have that peace of mind and, and to have that peace of mind at the end, you've got to, you've got to appease all the other subsystems that get you there. I mean, whether that be a mental state, whether that be, I've got, I've done the workout, whether that be, I've, I've looked after my kids or whatever. I really mm-hmm. think that that's the, um, that's the important thing to get in line, man. That's the important thing to get in line. And for, for me, it's as simple as just, I've got to talk to myself. It's the it's it's a head game. It's genuinely the head game. Like I can't, uh, I can let my I can let my kind of easy. Oh, don't worry about it today. That that will creep in, and I'll see it creep in, and I've got to kind of keep my eye on it and be like, no, nah, that's your weakness. You know, what I mean, that's that right. recognizing you're recognizing your weakness, and um, that's that's I think a really big thing because that weakness will 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 come about so many times and in so many different ways. Um, but you've got to just jump on it and be like, nah not it's not happening you know what i mean because that, that'll present itself in the craziest ways and it will, you'll find yourself just like developing uh, a a character uh, around it it mm. just can't happen man it just can't happen you know what i mean you, yeah, you've got to really um align again it's all come, always coming back down to the same core values right alignment mm. with, with who you really know you want to be you might not be that person right now but you know what gets you there you know that that eric thomas quote gets you there like, same part of that of that same video yeah. when he's talking about they're watching you now i mean like it, it's time to perform now like that bit gets me on yeah, yeah. like okay then okay then let's let's see <laughs> yeah and um yeah it's just like little things like that knowing yourself and i think whether it be music for you whether it be whatever um whether it be reading a passage or, or something you know i mean you, you've got to you've got to you've got to um understand how to turn yourself to that on switch for sure man yeah, fully. As um, again, you said the last couple of times as well, feeding which wolf you're going to feed, right? Mm. Powerful man, powerful stuff. Yeah. That's legit. <laughs> um, That's the one, bud. That that makes uh, in terms of feeding, it's like first day of Ramadan for you now, right? Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, nice, yeah. Segue. Was... nice segue. I like that. That was good. yeah, exactly. <laughs> was like, it's something I want to talk to you about as well. Is like, yeah, man. That's why I like hungry just... brown. <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. as well. You're like I'm consistently brown, brown. You're a different brown every time. <laughs> That's it. I've, I've got the, the pressure kind of hits me the day before. Like, what am I going to be tomorrow? I can't be hungry brown again. I don't want to be bored yeah. brown. I can't be still bored brown. So yeah. it just it just comes to me like <laughs> yeah, brilliant. you're hungry brown. Yeah, hungry brown. Yeah, but yeah. No, it's it's good, bro. It's good. Uh, yeah, today like first day. Um, it's mad. Like I was talking about. We always the night before like all your cousins will message and like you'll you'll get like uh, ramadan mubarak and you'll get like ramadan karim and all these kind of things that people are kind of sending out their well wishes and um obviously everyone's reflecting on, on what it what it really means and um it's proper interesting man because it definitely ties in for me with with the stuff we've been talking about in terms of like mental state 
and, mm. uh, and fortitude because like look at where we are right now with, with the whole coronavirus stuff yeah it's like it's like life is visiting potential misfortune on you right mm. and oh this this is this is this is the thing where we're all partaking and everyone's kind of affected in their own way but like once a year we get to like almost play a role where it's like life has visited a day upon you where you don't get food you don't get water today so how will you deal you know what i mean like how will you cope if if this was your everyday you know what i mean like if 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 this was if you were actually starving and you lived in a third world country like mm. how would your mental state be would you be able to still go about your day and keep your faculties and not get angry because because there's certain things we're not supposed to do in this month we're not supposed to like raise our voice or get angry or like or have any kind of like um just reaction to things we're supposed to just check ourselves in the moment and it's like when you have nothing because you have literally nothing like you have no food you have no water and like people like my mom will take this to a really um far degree in the sense that she will stay up at night and she'll pray so she'll even lose her sleep you know what i mean so so like she'll kind of give that up this month as well and she'll 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 sleep during the day she'll nap during the day but it's not the same you know what i mean mm. um we know everything obviously about the stuff we talked about with circadian rhythms and stuff it's like you do genuinely feel like like beat to down you know what i mean and uh in in that how will you keep yourself you know what i mean will you still be able to keep yourself like sane will you still be able to keep yourself like without feeling like oh you need to break under pressure you know what i mean so it's a it's a really really fun month and i kind of link it back to what i said at the start like cousins will message and there's almost like this anticipation oh shit we're about to get tested like how how's how is this how are we all going to feel and like today mm -hmm. we're just like laughing about it because inevitably one of my cousins in a group chat will post a picture of like a burger or something just just to yeah. poke and just to be just to make a laugh right <laughs> yeah like, that's just thank yeah. you <laughs> yeah that's what i needed that i needed that yeah yeah <laughs> yeah but it's just it's just um there's so many there's so many um <coughs> interesting interesting facets of this this month but that's mm. the main one for me which is like if if life was to visit like misfortune or visit like a hard time on you then how would you react? You know what I mean? And um, yeah, man, it's 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 a really interesting, really interesting time. Yeah, there's a lot of value in this in this period. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. I think I think when you when you exit this month, having gone through it, because it, it kind of kind of goes like this: the first day kind of hits you like a ton of bricks, where you think, "Oh crap, can't eat, can't." You looking at anything like I, before this podcast, my bottle of water that I was chugging down last podcast, mm. it was by my side, and I was like, "Okay, I gotta take that and I gotta." Throw it yeah, I can't, I can't have that around me, you know, because through habit you'll start talking. And I'll be like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, exactly. And I just messed up because I didn't think. Um, but like little things like that, you just take it for granted. You know what I mean? Like, like today, it's not an option. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to happen. Mm. And uh, even talking right now, like my mouth's going dry, and I'm like, usually I want <laughs> yeah. to grab something. But um, yeah, it, it's it's the mental fortitude, man. It's the mental fortitude to to just constantly check yourself. And then when you when you go sorry when you go through the first day hits you and then you kind of get through your cycle you kind of you kind of develop a bit of a routine you get through to like day 15 day 20 and then it's almost like you're working like the way i my, the way my mind works is i've got to work it through like okay i'm halfway okay now there's less to go than i've done you know what i mean like i'm mm. there's there's only five left ten left whatever but when you get over the halfway mark you're you're quite like depleted from the month so I, the way i kind of figure it is like if you start off with like hydration levels are pretty high like you can only take in so much in the evening because you got to eat, you got to feed, you got to sleep, you got to whatever. Then as you go through the month, you genuinely do start running low. And I would love to test this and be like, okay, what are my hydration levels day one? And what are they day 27? You know what I mean? Because that's the thing that I feel the most. I feel like a, like a, um, just super, super drawn out by the end of it. And mm. um, there's times when you walk down the street and your goal is just to get to the end of the street <laughs> you go just put that foot in front of that foot because you're yeah. wiped out you know what i mean I, I don't know how people in hot countries do it because I mean, this is warm out it's warm here right now but i know by the end of this month i'll feel like super wiped out and um that's that's just the way it goes is that you you start off thinking about all these things and by the end of it you're just thinking about surviving and getting through and mm. um yeah man the, 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 and then when you come out of it you're just like oh shit you know what i do i went through that so i'm happy that i've gone through that i've built the strength and uh you kind of come out of it with more appreciation for everything you do have as mm. opposed to like seeing it for taking it for granted next time you you can just go and go to the shop and just buy a chocolate bar you can just go here and do this do that the other you're just like oh cool like thank you you know what i mean you, yeah, you yeah. just feel more and more gracious in the moment and mm. 
yeah, there's, there's, you, you, you do realize how abundant we actually are. I think this is a, this is like a, a for us, a hobby, you know, you know, you GSP's coach, he's talking about like yeah. how in terms of human history, like we, the way he puts it is like, we are the millionaires of human history. Like, hmm. like, yes, we have issues like what's going on right now, but really if you live in a country like this, you can, you can have it pretty easy. You know, you can really look hmm. after yourself. You don't really have to go hunt for your food. You know, no one's trying to kill you. No, no one's trying to raid your village. You know what I mean? And, um, yeah, I think we need, I think things, times like this month are very, very necessary just to check in with that feeling that, you know what, you could have nothing. You could have mm. like nobody, you could have no food on the table, no, no water to drink. And how would you deal with that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. As, uh, I think one of the things you said, which was, um, by the end of it, you're just trying to figure out how to get one foot in front of the other, just make it to the end of the street. To me, that sounds like it's also it's amazing at building uh, a presence appreciating a moment is like uh, if that if that makes sense because it's like you can't really think of anything too much apart from mm. uh, apart from what you're kind of going through right now is, yeah. does that make sense yeah yeah for sure i'm sure for mm. uh, it, it's one of those where like if if you if you um keep your mind in the present you can really deal with it much much better if you kind of let your let your thoughts kind of go away with you, at the end of the day, they're, they're just thoughts. You know, I mean, the reality is you're hungry now. You can be hungry tomorrow. You know, what I mean, it's it, it's not it's not something that you need to think about too much. You just need sure. to keep yourself in that kind of centered space. And like you mm. said, it keeps you present. If you allow, if you kind of use it the right way, you can use this month to really, really alter your mental state because there's nothing to do. You know, what I mean, like we, we realize how much um, time eating drinking going to the toilet kind of will take up planning your yeah. meal cooking your meals yeah. just goes you know what i mean just goes like i can have all my work done by 10 a.m be like okay what do I do now you know i mean like <laughs> i got nothing to do now and um yeah like it's it's obviously obviously you do have obviously loads of other things to do but you've uh, you're left alone with your thoughts a lot and um mm. it's good it's good because your body literally in terms of aligning with the processes that it has to uh to do you haven't got to digest food anymore. You haven't got to worry about that. That's a whole like system where you're just mm. like, okay, you just take the month off, like you just chill out. And uh, really, it's it's like, <laughs> kind of like a daredevil thing, right? Like you lose your sight, but all the other all the other senses kind of become yeah. heightened. So maybe like your body is recovering better, or but you're not training as hard, so you're kind of taking it a bit easy there. And it's 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 a very like rejuvenative process if if you can kind of keep your mindset in the. Uh, in in a good way in a good place you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure yeah, is um is i think something that um because i mean the most i've ever done i think is like 48 maybe pushed it to 72 hours because mm -hmm. just like to experience the health benefits and stuff like that or just to occasionally just be like you know just it's just um i, yeah, I know there's health benefits to fasting basically so there's the occasion where every once in a while i'll just be like all right i'm gonna do 48 hours and i'm just mm -hmm. not gonna not gonna munch anything and um but for me i still drink water and um and yeah one of the things i find it really does is um you just because of you just don't have to think about anything else in the way you just uh could like yeah so the worries that we have like the little things like you describe which is uh you know what i'm going to eat next how am i going to make it what, uh, like what am i uh where am I going to get the food from? Like, uh, what am I going to, what am I going to do to make it, uh, or just go through that whole process? It's just like, that's gone, right? Like, it's just exactly what you said. That's that, that, that thing is worth the, the worry about that kind of thing is gone. So there's that mental space that is kind of freed up. And so you can, you can focus on essentially whatever you want to focus on. And, uh, and then what was quite cool is uh, like Christian Bell. I don't know if you ever watched the Machine, the Machinist, uh, the movie, the Machinist. I heard about this. I've not seen it. Yeah, he's because uh, he went from like, he did ridiculous things where he went uh, basically he weighed less than 120 pounds, right? And I mean, for a guy who normally weighs 180 pounds, is like 80, roughly 80 kilos, is like, and he went down to 50, you know, something like that. Oh, it's, it's like. Man. It's insane. That's it's, crazy. Uh, it's like fifty-five kilos or something. It's just insane for someone like him. Mm -hmm. But one thing, uh, but he like the kind of, I guess the spiritual process of it, where he goes, he got to a stage where he's on set, and uh, he doesn't give a fuck about 
anything that is happening around him except for the moment that he needs to go when he's uh, asked to do the scene. And he goes, it was an incredible amount of mental focus that I achieved, even though I was completely emaciated. So, because I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't think about moving. I couldn't think about uh, eating. I couldn't think about interacting with people. I just had to keep my energy uh, conserved to the point where I could only use it on a thing that was absolutely necessary. And so I was just super focused on, on, on the task in front of me. And he goes, it was kind of mental. There was such a mental clarity that came from doing that. I was like, man, that's super interesting. And then, um, and then, yeah, from, so from a, on a minor level, when, whenever I've done like, you know, a couple of days where I've decided to cut out the eating is like, yeah, you kind of, like, I can, I can see where he was coming from. And then I imagine with uh, Ramadan being a whole month long process, you, uh, you can really cultivate that kind of focus and you can really cultivate that kind of, uh, uh mentality to be in the moment when you're not. Uh, when you're not worried about other things that you normally worry about in you during a day to day because you just got to conserve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, man, I totally agree. Totally, totally agree. It's, it's a strange one because um, you, we look at other things in life for sustenance. And, and really, the only mm. thing that this kind of the, 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 the thing that it teaches me the most is that I only need to have my mental state in the right place mm. for, for sustenance. You know what I mean? I don't need to have, I don't need to have a, a anything i'm craving i don't need to have any of it i just need to have my mental state in the right place and um the water thing becomes very very hard i think towards the end of it where you just you just your body just feels like it's just hollow you know what i mean like you you realize the importance of hydration over actual like, calories like we talked spent so many times so much time talking about calories in versus calories out but mm. at the end of the day like it, give me no calories for a month i'll survive if you give me water you know what i mean like that that's what it comes down to and it, it's mm. it's um yeah back to that sustenance thing i think because we are so much water we are so much like hydration you know what i mean that 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 really really helps us and uh, when it's not there again yeah you you do definitely feel it but at the same time um i completely resonate with what you said there about the uh the mental focus because you yeah you because you, you're left with again nothing else to worry about mm. you i think i think the best thing you can do at this time is really just try and cultivate the, the best um least affected like he said like nothing else mattered right nothing else mm. mattered. And this, this, is, this is a really big thing that me and tj were talking about yesterday um is that like things will will get to you in life but then if you rise to them you're just kind of like at the whim you're at the kind of you're at their beck and call like they can pull you left, right, and center. Whereas if yeah. if someone's in front of you, like kind of flinching and flinching, and you're just like, it's not doing anything to me. You know what I mean? That that's where you have control of yourself. Yeah. And this this is what it kind of it's just it's a month in learning how to control yourself. You know what I mean, yeah. that's that's from from the first like base urge. I'm hungry. Like oh, when I'm a kid, I'll cry if I'm hungry. I want I'm not feeding. You know what I mean? But right now, it's like okay, no, have your faculties about you. Keep keep your mind sharp and be like, okay, yes, you're hungry, but it's not going to be forever you know what i mean you can find other ways to sustain yourself and i think that the first thing you can go is like you can go inside and you can just make sure that you're you're just clearing your thoughts clearing your thoughts clearing that you know it's not going to last forever and um what can i use this time to better be right now rather than mm. i am hungry of course i'm hungry cool but can we use this time to to build that mental fortitude that's going to help you later in life and i think that's what christian bell's kind of talking about there is that he knows that that's within him it's like mm. once you can do it once, you can then do it time and time again. And uh, this mm. is interesting because not last year, not the year before, but the year before that was the first time that I'd fasted in a long time. Like me, me and my like um, adherence to my faith wasn't always the way I now want it to be. So mm. it was like something that I was one foot in, one foot out. But then you know, kind of slowly, progressively through uh, my cousins and, and just my family being super strong around me um brought me back and 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 now i'm happy to be where i am but um that first time when i thought okay i'm gonna fast i'm gonna i've not fasted in years as an adult i hadn't like fasted before mm. so it was like i was so scared that i wouldn't be able to do it that say ramadan started today i started myself yesterday you know i was like yeah. i'm gonna jump the gun i'm just gonna yeah. go first Obviously, it don't count but like it's like yeah and i, I just want to know if i can do it you know what i mean i'm gonna yeah, show okay, up, i'm good. gonna show up on the court and i'm gonna shoot that free throw and be like can i actually get it in the hoop you know what i mean like and i did i did i was fine and it was like 
but then it was like the next day. I was like, okay, everyone's joining me now. Like, it's cool. I, I, I kind of shook the cobwebs out. I almost like got the ring rest out by just doing it one time. Yeah. And um, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. And then as a result, like all the things we just talked about, you you steadily just build and build and build, and you're left with this like understanding that I can do it when I when it when it comes time, I can step up and I can do it and I can go without and I can uh, sustain myself in other ways. And mm. um, you almost look forward to it. Like I said about about my cousins calling me yesterday and being like, oh, the test is here, right? You almost kind of look forward to it and say, okay, cool. Let's uh, let's see where we're at this month. We'll see where we're at this year. You know what I mean? Yeah, cool. And then, and then with um, so yeah, the other thing I was going to ask you about with it was uh, was trading and like how you end up approaching approaching this period for your, I guess, like optimizing your physical well being. I suppose mm. so because uh, at this stage, uh, a lot of people start worrying about you know how they're going to keep their gains. You know, <laughs> it's like uh, if, uh, for for people who are going to go through Ramadan who have been working hard in the gym. Uh, just want to be healthy is like uh, what uh, how do you how do you approach it and what do you think is uh, uh, with what you know what is the ideal way of dealing with uh, with this so that you can continue to like like progress in whatever way you can mm-hmm. I think I think it's a case of like this month is is uh, a bit of a marathon definitely mm-hmm. a marathon not a sprint so in, in that sense I remember like two years ago I uh, sat there on the first day of fasting and uh, I'd taken my food. I was working at UP at the time, took my mm. food with me to the gym and fast opens around 8 p.m. And I I try and eat and then I'm like, my plan is to eat and then go straight up to the gym floor and train. Now, my mind, my, my body is in a place where it's not had to do anything digestion wise for the whole day. And I sit there with a bowl, with a, with a, with a Tupperware box full of like, um it was it was oats no, it wasn't oats it was like rice flakes so similar to oats so a load mm. of carbohydrates a mashed up banana in there some peanut butter and some whey now give me that like normal day i'll just put it away like put it away and be like okay ready to train like 10 minutes later okay cool i've got my energy and i'm good to go and i sat there i tried to put this in me and i was like bloating hard straight away like, my body just reacted it was like nope this is not going in like like each spoonful i was just like what the hell's happening? Like my body just yeah. doesn't want to, doesn't want to have this. It doesn't want to like take this in. And, um, I ended up like leaving half of it, trying to train and trying to push myself at that late time of night. And it just wouldn't work. It just wouldn't work. And, um, I kind of realized from that point that I have to almost like trial and error with things and mm-hmm. not think that, you know what, I can just go, I can, I can almost incorporate. You can't like live your life in those six hours where you can eat the same way you would outside of that. And that's yeah. basically what I was trying to do. I was like, okay, my calorie requirements are three and a half thousand. I'm going to get these calories in, in this way, that way, the other, and I'll be fine, and it'll be cool, and I can crack on and keep making games. <laughs> yeah. And at the time, it was almost like they they wanted the UP wanted me to to write an article on like how you can get leaner and stronger and whatever during this month. And I was fully bought in to the whole UP kind of like do it at all costs mentality. And right. uh, I take them up before pictures. Now I planned on taking after pictures where I would look better and whatever. And um, yeah, that was day one. And I was like, oh shit, this, this is not going to work. I need to, I need to, <laughs> I need to call somebody. <laughs> that article is going to be late. You know? <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah, that, so really what I found out was that I need to drink water like straight away. I need to drink water. I need to make sure that my body is hydrated before I do anything else. And it's almost like, you drink the water and you don't need to go to the bathroom because your body just like soaking it up like a sponge. Yeah. You know I mean? And um, yeah, so that, that was the first thing is what I didn't do that time was I tried to put a load of food in my body and uh, really had no respect for the fact that I had not drunk anything properly. And at the same time, you can't just slam back the water because your body's like, like if as soon as you put that in, you've got to almost like pace yourself and sip on it. So mm. um, it really, it's, it's an it's a exercise to firstly in understanding your body and then in, in restraint before it's about gains 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 and i think you can you can kind of like check your mindset first and be like okay for this month i probably won't like get in condition to to win mr olympia you know what i mean i probably won't have that like it's just not going to happen but yeah. i can actually check myself in other ways um i still keep moving forward especially towards the end of the month when it becomes more like routine i can use this time to to again like check my mental state move forward slowly understand my body understand what it needs when i've been fasting for this long and reprioritize in a way i mean there's, there's not to say that we can't 
train hard and train well and we'll get into that but i think the um the first thing you got to check is that don't go into this month thinking that you're gonna win on day one because you're probably not and you really have to just almost use that first week as like a a deload week in the gym mm-hmm. especially and in kind of life and be like okay body i'm going to give you what you need and we're slowly going to edge our way forward and um in doing that i think you're going to you're going to be let you're going to be <laughs> allowed by your body to move forward further through the month and um and really like flourish to the end as opposed mm-hmm. to getting to the end get into the line and be like oh i'm dead i need another month afterwards to recover from the, yeah. the stress i put myself through and that's that's why i found myself when i did that thing for up but for myself i mean i'm not going to blame them um i was i was i was in hook line and sinker right i mean i almost got to the end of the month and i did i trained myself super hard i kind of i didn't force food but i was i was i was training at like super early in the morning so what i would do is i'd end up like getting up early um before fast was supposed to close so say say fast was closing at 4 a.m i'd be at the gym at like 2 30 and i would train like this yeah this this was a regular I, wow this is a regular thing because i was like i've got to get my session in and i would train and then i would eat something at work i would close my fast and i would come back home again and i would sleep for another two hours or i would just sleep at work like i would just go into the back and i would onto the stairwell and i would sleep <laughs> there and then i'd start my clients from six and i'd have like six i'd always have six seven eight nine ten booked out and then from 10, client would finish at 11. And I'd go home and I'd sleep for a bit. And then maybe you'd have clients from like three till six. And from three till six, you'd come back into work, train those clients. And then you'd break your fast either at work or you'd go straight home and you'd eat. And then you'd sleep. As soon as you've eaten, you'd almost sleep. You kind of you say your prayers, get to bed, wake up in the morning and be at the gym again for like 2 30 ish and be like, I've got to train, I've got to get this in. And mm-hmm. um, that routine, that routine was a tough routine. But I, I think the way I got through it was really managing my volume through the month. Like I wasn't trying to kill myself with 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 um, pushing too much load at the gym. I wasn't trying to kill myself with pushing too much, too many sets and too many reps. It was mm. almost like for that month, just preserve what you can with uh, with regards to to strength, and that strength will carry you through afterwards. Um, and I think for a lot of people out there, especially like this time right now, where they haven't got much things to do outside of fasting and they're at home. I think you can use this time really well to work on efficiency of movement. So work on the things that are, that are limiting your progress. So if you've got a bad shoulder because, and then you can't bench press properly, you can't do push ups, or you can't like hang your washing up on the line without your shoulder hurting, mm-hmm. fix that shoulder. You know what I mean? Work yeah. on your passive ability, work on, work on the stability of your scapula. You know I mean, like work with someone like you who actually help them out. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that, that, that's the goal uh, of this month, not to, uh, to think about really pushing forward with with uh, muscle mass or whatever you can you can do other things like for instance at tonight my routine this this month this this year is i will i will i will train before i open my fast and i'm going to go onto the um onto my garden and basically like have my session but I'll, I'll go through it at a slow pace i'll take the rest periods where i need to take the rest periods i'll drop the weights down for the first week which i think is always uh, always a clever thing to do i'll drop the sets down by two sets per uh, per series of exercises so if i'm doing my A series and I, I, right now my scheduled set is six sets. I'll do it down to four and um, I'll take my time in between. And then afterwards I'll do some really light shadow boxing, like super slow, super easy, and then just scale up the volume. So by the end of my last week, my fourth week, um, I'll be back up to six sets. I'll be doing them at the weight that I left the month at and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be moving well. You know I mean, as soon as that week's finished, I can actually put the food back in. I can put the hydration back in. My sleeping pattern will, will return to normal and that's it we're back to the races again you know what i mean so right. so it's, it's 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 almost like just manage it at the start um don't don't think that you're gonna you're gonna win it day one because you've got inevitably a month of this to go so keep yourself healthy keep yourself fit and prioritize the other things that are going to get you through the month in the best shape and, and right now if you get ill because this is something that happens like during ramadan if, you, if you're not kind of on it with your 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 hydration your sleep particularly um you can get ill I mean, your immune system takes a knock because your sleep is is so massively affected especially for someone like my mom who who will stay up at night and, and pray and whatever and even even if you're not like that you the routine the way it goes is like so tonight we'll open our fast 8 23 then we'll eat food and we'll pray and then we'll pray again and it's like a it's a long prayer in the evening um, and then it's like, okay, so it's around 
10 30 11 o'clock okay cool we've got to be up at 3 30 to close that fast so mm -hmm. you're gonna to have to figure out how in that time you're going to sleep and you're going to eat again and you're going to whatever you know what i mean so really your routine is all over the place you can sleep during the day but maybe you want to stay up and eat in that time or, or whatever so um there's a lot of things to consider and i think right now the best thing is just to figure out the best routine for you and then aim to build on it as you go through the month as opposed to just trying to um like i said like go hammer and tongs and, and kind of incorporate your old lifestyle into this lifestyle in mm. uh, in the first week wicked that's really helpful it's like deload and then you can as the as you get through as you go through ramadan you can start to build it back up again that's what i that's what i recommend i mean i mean yeah. but at the same time you've you've got to you've got to just individual variances will always apply like i know that i can do that i feel i feel that i can i can go forward with and i can progress like training loads and whatever but um, sometimes you're you're so dehydrated by the end by the end of it that and, and this can be helped by your food choices, especially when you're opening your fast. And a lot mm. of a lot of our people will go towards like fried food and yeah. and uh, just like gorging on stuff, right? And it's like you're really you're gonna you're gonna be struggling the next day because you know what you all that sodium you're taking in right now, you're gonna be thirsty as hell tomorrow, and um, that's gonna have a knock on effect. And that's gonna have a knock on effect. So really, it's mm. it just it's winning in the moment. Like not just with your mindset, but it's like okay, you're opening your fast. Like first thing that comes in is water. Second thing that comes in is like vegetables and nutrients, and then you'll get some good quality proteins in. Okay, let's go after the fats and let's make sure we stay away from things that are really going to just um, use it for the next day. You know what I mean? Like we don't want to put added stress on the digestive system in this month. We kind of want to use it for all the benefits that it's going to give us, be it like uh, mental fortitude or even uh, giving the digestive system a rest. Um, whereas we can kind of counteract all of that with with putting this stuff in at a time when we're very sensitive to, to any kind of change. So yeah, yeah man, it's, it's worth considering all those, all those variables for sure. Yeah. Wicked. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's good to know. Yeah. So, cause yeah. Um, yeah, personally as well, I've got, um, I've got a Muslim client as well, who's going to go through Ramadan as well. So uh, I mean, training for a while, so we know how to, we know how to handle it. We just make sure, but it's always good to, um, but you've said a couple of things there which are quite interesting as well, like good food for thought as well. Just making sure that when I check in with him, then is this going to be yeah. making sure that hydration, like how's he feeling in terms of hydration? Like does he feel more parched um, as the weeks go on? Therefore, we'll just tone down the training a little bit versus um, if he starts to feel a little bit better, then we can start going from that deload in that first week back to uh, increasing, increasing the intensity slightly, slightly. So uh, yeah, that's really cool. That's really interesting. Man. That's good food for yeah. thought. This is is even things like um, electrolyte balance and and making yeah. sure that you can adequately bring on the hydration um, when you can actually bring it on. So obviously that's that's a bit more advanced, but at the same time, it's worth considering. Like, are you are you salting your food correctly? Can you can you get um, a low sodium salt in in and kind of increase increase other things? Can you can you supplement with magnesium? to kind of minimize, minimize, minimize the fatigue, you know what I mean? So there's, there's loads of things where we can actually uh, um, factor in, but really individual variances will always trump all of that stuff. So you can have a plan, but it's really how your client kind of goes through this. Um, but those those definitely are the other are the, are the kind of the the limiters of success, because if, if we can't, if we can't, if we try and go at this, like it's like, it reminds me of like Charles Poliquin saying when he's like, man with one ass can't sit on two horses. Like you, you can't, you can't like uh, try and do two things this month. Like the month is, yeah. is there. I love that line. Yeah, man. And it's, it's like, um, let's just, let's just get through it. <laughs> let's just get through it with, uh, with, with, with that one focus in mind. And then afterwards we can kind of build forward but this month, just tone things down and be okay with toning things down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool, man. It's good to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah. So it's a fun time, man. It's a fun time. Hopefully, we'll, yeah. we'll get we'll get another one of these podcasts in like week three, and I'll just be like, I'll be, I'll be shrunken head brown. That's what I'll be. <laughs> just shrunken <laughs> like a day. <laughs> yeah. be like, uh, dude, don't make me talk, man. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that you approach it with like it's going to be fun as well because I got some friends who are just like. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to last all the Ramadan and stuff. It's like, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> Just, it's it's be, like, man. all the to you. 
Yeah, too right, man. I, I, do, do you know what I find? I, I, I've thought about this last year. I was like, people who drink coffee must really struggle right now. Like, I don't touch coffee. I've never touched coffee. I've never, yeah. I've never been like. I think I've only ever had coffee a handful of times, and um, yeah. it always messes me up. Like, I, I can have it, really? but I just like, um, I just, I just don't need the caffeine. I've never needed the caffeine. I've never, never needed it to to get up and go. But people kind of need that, or like people who smoke. Like, you're not supposed to smoke in this month. You know, there's mm. loads of things where you're supposed to just say, not knock it on the head. And um, yeah, it must be very, very tough for them. But again, you got you got to check your demons, right? You can't you can't just kind of have them running running wild all over you. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> what yeah. uh, what happens to you when you have some coffee? I'm interested. Um, so I get properly wired, like properly wired <laughs> off, off anything, anything, even, even right. the smallest amount of coffee. And I remember one time. Um, Sylvie, me and Sylvie were going to training, and remember that there's that there's that place at the end of the street in way near Wave. Oh yeah, artisan. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, nice coffee place, right? And yeah. um, we get there a bit early, and I, I always like to go to the gym and just like warm up. And Syl- but Sylvie's like, oh, it's cool. Don't worry, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get some coffee. And I was like, okay, cool. So he orders me a double espresso. I'm like, okay, cool. I don't drink coffee, so I don't even know what a double espresso is. It comes yeah. out, and he, he just he just downs his. And I just sip on mine. I get it in, and I'm just like what the hell like, <laughs> you, can, you can hear sounds right and uh or you can hear sounds <laughs> you can see sounds <laughs> and um yeah and then we, so we sit there for a bit longer some other guys like from the, from the club come and join and he's like i'm gonna get another coffee and i'm like oh, okay cool and he brings me one and i'm like well, i don't need another coffee so yeah. I'm just with everybody and i'm just like okay fine i'll drink it as well oh, shit. And I, swear, I went into the i went into this this session and I must have just like, I think it was who was there? Magic was there, and we had like four or five rolls, and I think I would have just gone at a billion miles an hour, like no, <laughs> no, no appreciation for him, or like, oh, this is we're just flow rolling. Like, what's flow rolling? Like, yeah. <laughs> coffee rolling right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The beads are running through the system, man. And uh, yeah, really yeah. Cool. and uh, yeah, man. I, after I just crashed hard, and yeah. uh, I was like, Sylvie, never again. Never again. Am I? Am I? Am I go with the coffee shop? Yeah, man. That's a joke. Oh, That's a <laughs> yeah. How long did that effect last for on you as well? I right. no, it, did, it didn't last long. It didn't last long. Halfway through, because well, if you I, went to trading, you probably like burned yourself out with it a little bit as well. Yeah, because oh, I went in like in straight <laughs> to first roll. I was just like, let's go. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Then uh, it just burned out, and I was like, by the end of it, I was like, I had to slow down. I remember that session really, really vividly because uh, it was going to be a double dragon session. So we were going to do the, the. It was a Sunday. Oh, we we're going to oh, do yeah. the um, the open mat, and then we we're going to do Sylvia session. Mm. And I ended up like half arsing Sylvia session there was only like four four of us that stayed back for it but yeah. he, I, usually i'm well up for it and it was just like halfway through i was like no nah, i can't do this right now like stomach's gone head's gone yeah. like don't need, don't need to do that like in future i just i think i just need like a tiny tiny little bit <laughs> that's yeah. it i'm good i'm good that's it man. Yeah. exactly that's funny it's like a hypersensitivity it's uh it's like especially if you don't have it often as well is uh, or if you ever don't have it at all yeah. Then you end up finding finding your limit as well. Me personally, it's like I'll take one shot a day. I'm good. If I if I have more than that, I can just feel a little jittery. So mm. yeah, everybody's got their own limits as well. But interestingly, yeah. I did some like um, ages ago. Uh, I met a woman who does uh, like ge- ge- um, genetic testing and stuff like that, like uh, specific to some like stuff for uh, uh, for nutrition as well. And um, so based on my personal experience, which is like, okay, I figured out over time that I deal with one shot of coffee and I'm good with that. And I don't really want to have it later than two o'clock, maybe three o'clock in the afternoon because because of my sensitivity to it. And uh, and then when I got that done, it was it also showed me that uh, my genetic pathway that deals with breaking down caffeine is. Um, is was it slow it's just basically it's slower it uh, takes longer to break down caffeine uh than what would i don't know what would be considered normal i guess so i was like yeah that makes a lot of sense because it just stays in my system for longer i'm got a higher sensitivity to it as well so then i had that like i had that report and then i had my own subjective experience as well i was like okay cool this is good like uh, mm-hmm. i just need to take that one shot and then that's it thank you very much i'm done yeah man don't you go any further than that no, no, it's true. Like links back to what you said about whoop, right? Like kind of gives you that mm. uh, that feedback to say, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm on point. I need to rest today. I need to whatever. And uh, I think it's interesting about the HRV on whoop. Like 
like like that's that's a what do you know much about the the science behind that because i remember nick was asking me um yeah yeah telling me that 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 the the hrv score that i'll get on there is, is crazy crazy high and i think it is like high like there's only like on our in our group sylvia is nutella there's myself who kind of have like a high score but those they they're both of them two nutella and sylvia's is well higher than mine mm. and um yeah like uh i think i read uh, actually jordan shadows mentioned this on the course he was talking about how it's like uh what was the word respiratory sinus arrhythmia like yeah. that's that's what it is right that's um that's that's what i'm kind of measuring is is the just is is the high highs and the low lows right is that, is that what you know about? yeah yeah so the it's essentially it's the the uh the time uh, time between heartbeats Mm-hmm. So, because it's not consistent, it's not like if you have a sixty beat per minute um, heart rate, it's not like it's beating once every second. It might be point eight seconds, it might be one point two seconds between beats, and then so what the variability is measuring it is the average uh, of variance in that uh, in, in between heart heartbeats. So with Whoop, they do it in your slow wave sleep cycle. That last uh, the last uh, calculated slow wave sleep cycle during your sleep mm. take a five minute period and then in that five minute period it calculates the average variance of your um the time between your heartbeats and uh, and so that's what that number is and then generally speaking the higher the number the healthier you are the more resilient to stress you are the fit you are and uh, yeah so that's uh, that's basically what it's measuring is that time between the heartbeats yeah, yeah i wonder how because i've not i've only had this week for like a couple of months now i wonder how it will how it will affect in this month obviously sleep, yeah sleep, like massively reduces yeah i was just gonna say i would be super curious yeah. about that yeah you sleep, be, you sleep uh, what interest is what happens yeah, Sorry? yeah yeah so you sleep a lot more during the day mm. um as as opposed to uh sleeping that much at night and then um yeah like when you're sleeping especially at the, when you're after you've eaten you you've you've usually had your evening meal and you go to bed mm. and when you wake up in the morning you like had your meal in the morning and you go straight to bed and those are the same thing those are the same times like i would never eat and sleep like i would never eat and sleep usually it's like two hours yeah. um i'll eat a meal then i go to bed but um in this month you kind of just need to find sleep where you can mm. and uh yeah interesting to see how how uh how shitty my scores become <laughs> yeah that'll be yeah that, that will be fascinating as well because i don't know yeah just see what the recovery scores are like see what um see if there's any adaptation over time um to that period like yeah that'd be interesting i wonder if uh, i don't know i can't remember how long they've been going for but they'll probably have some data on this kind of stuff as well if uh, if people who are with them have shared that they are practicing fasting during ramadan as well i wonder if mm. they do have that kind of data yeah that'd be interesting though man maybe worth a message and just be like look guys this is what i'm doing right now see what you think of it yeah mm. yeah yeah exactly you could even you can even send them a message about it <laughs> Why not, man? Why not get get the good cheaps together? I've got a few few um, cousin brothers who've got whoops, and uh, they they will yeah they send the same stuff off and be like, okay, we're all we're all fairly similar similar mm-hmm. age group, and uh, see what you can notice amongst other trends as well. Yeah, yeah, interesting stuff, man. Interesting stuff. Yeah, how's how's your training going right now, man? Yeah, it's okay. Just um, make it do. I got my bands um, through, so I'm going to adapt for the uh, the COVID nineteen plan. Like <laughs> Basically, it, like it. the uh, uh, the home training plan for yeah, the stuff yeah, yeah. That you set me up with uh, but otherwise uh been smashing out some stuff with the kettlebell which has been good so mostly swings um single leg exercises with the kettlebell as well so i can make use of the fact that it's a lighter load than i would normally use um upper body yeah just like push-ups i've got a pull-up bar as well so making use of that and just essentially just and trying to get a bit of a metabolic hit from it as well because mm. of the because of the fact that we're a bit well i'm a bit more sedentary than i normally would be you know because mm. i'm delivering sessions from home or i'm at home so your baseline level of activity just goes way down so i'm trying to give it a bit more of a metabolic hit with that as well so i've been supersetting exercises more um and uh, kind of varying between upper body and lower body in that superset so it just keeps the heart rate popped up a bit and uh, yeah so that's been good i'm going to i'm going to go back to the plan as well because that mm. is only something you can keep up with the short term because with that there's no like um there's not i'm not really tra- i'm not really tracking that i'm not really um doing that f- uh with 
anything long term in mind whereas with the program you gave me is like there's a long term goal with that and there's a track there as well where you do the do these movements consistently over a six week training block then you know where you're at at the end of it basically you know you know how good your body feels and because you've had time to practice the movements in the in that training block there's there's basically a lot more to be gained from doing it in a planned way rather than what i've just done recently which is just adapt to the circumstances yeah. and and smash that out which has still been very useful and very beneficial but having the base of at least a two to two to three time training uh, plan workout uh, training plan Mm. and then um, and then doing whatever i can around that that um yeah there's a lot more clarity with that as well so i'm gonna go back to that um uh, because now now i can i got the i got the i got the equipment mm. and then yeah start smashing it out again man it's like it's like one of those where you go you gotta check the variables that you're progressing with right it's like yeah we can, we can progress with like how high did my heart rate get today or how how um how much I sweat on that I kind of feel like I got like rate of perceived exertion that kind of thing mm. um and then like if, if you look at the kind of the plan that I'd I'd want to make for someone it's almost like are you progressing in time under tension are you getting more reps are you getting mm. more sets under your belt are you getting um, is is the like time under tension for each rep is that being adhered to properly you know what I mean like are you adhering to the rest periods like these kind of things are progressible you know what I mean like you look at like the range of motion around a joint we can look at like, okay, are you are you um, are you improving that over time? Are you actually affecting more of your of your physiology over time? That's mm. uh, that's something that we can, we can like track, and then you can kind of look at like like you said, like it's time time in a place, right? Sometimes you need to have that cardio smash, and you need to like like I need to go out in the garden and just like smash out some shadow boxing and just kind of move my body. But then at the end of the day, I need to look that and double down on the thing that's gonna help me move better. So it's like, am I rotating? better through my thoracic spine am, I, am mm. I able to open up my hips i'm able to kind of like support my weight on my legs you know what i mean so these things to actually facilitate that stuff you almost want to have um a really systematic approach to okay what are the subcomponents that make this up like can i can i become cardiovascularly more fit like in especially in your position or my position right now i think cardio is a great thing great tool to use like getting outside mm. and doing some sprints i saw you doing some sprints on uh on those instagram a little while ago you i think you sent it on our group where you were just like you left your phone and you were just like running down oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i think that's really great that goes because outside my uh because um, it's by a block of flats so they've got like a 75 80 meter stretch oh, nice. where um i just thought yeah i'm going to use that <laughs> so i just went outside no one's around and i just went <laughs> yeah, <laughs> off. All right, love it. Get my heart rate back. So, like, my heart rate would jack up, and then I'd get it back down again, and then go again, jack up, get back down, and go again. So, I thought it was a good way to, and that was on a day where uh, the whoop was telling me that I was probably, I think I was like something like 50%, re like, uh, in terms of recovery. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, in terms of intensity, you don't want to push it. But whereas there's the high neuromuscular output from doing a sprint, and there is a, more of a neural fatigue. In terms of cardio, cardio effect, it's not as intense. So I just mm -hmm. thought, yeah, okay, that'd be a good time to make use of that. And just, you know, it's twenty minutes as well. Like I kind of warmed myself up in my room, went downstairs, and then just did that five times, and then came back upstairs. Right. That was nice. it. I like it. Yeah, like that was it. Yeah, that was useful. So yeah, that's another thing to throw in, like a couple times a week, right? And it's good because uh, because of the um, uh, the kind of anaerobic training that you're going through with that, and then the um, uh and uh, yeah and the fact that you know you push your heart rate and then you get a full recovery and then push your heart rate get a full recovery and so uh working that explosiveness is all those different kinds of things and you can be done pretty quickly so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's really interesting like um i posted this this question to, to jordan shallows in in the in his facebook group mm. and uh, it was just talking about like movement specific things for specifically like combat sports and the the answer he came back with was really helpful in the sense that the thing that helps you do well is doing the movement itself that you partake in so it's effectively like mm. saying if i'm a powerlifter and i deadlift deadlift's going to help me you know what i mean like if i power, mm. power lift and i squat squat's going to help me it's like cool if i'm a if i'm a combat athlete and like and sprawls single leg takedowns is going to help me okay i need to sprawl i need a single leg takedown but really you, you, then you can go down the rabbit hole of like what subcomponents help that but mm. then it's like okay if you're in there with Sylvie, like you can't really sprawl better than him. You can't really tingle the takedown better than him, but you need to be able to be fit enough to kind of last the round. Yeah. And that's where it kind of links back to cardio. So it's like using this month now, 
um, this is this is a, well not this month but like my training right now is more geared towards improving that cardio cardiovascular output and I think if I can kind of improve that and the way he he put it in his video reply was that like if you if you want to be able to throw the right hand in the twelfth round firstly you have to get to the twelfth round you, know mm. I mean? you have to be able to, really. to to like have the cardio base to to be calm in the moment to kind of collect your thoughts and uh and not like fry when it's time to actually like shine you know what i mean like well, one of the quotes on my board is like fatigue makes cowards of men like you don't want to what makes cowards of men fatigue 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 yeah <laughs> yeah and it's like it's like you don't want to be like just burnt out and then be like running from the fight because you got nothing to go with yeah. you know the lungs are just gone whereas um if you've got your mental capacity if you've got kind of that that there then um, you can always figure it out you know what i mean you can always kind of like Shimmy to the left, shimmy to the right, and all of a sudden, oh, there's an arm drag. Oh shit! Like you can just pull it off, right? Yep. But if uh, if your if your head's gone because you're just you're just blowing hard, then um, yeah, I think that's a it's a big big uh, advantage if somebody's yeah. got it over you, and if if you haven't got it, you're a massive disadvantage. So yeah, especially right now, I think um, without gyms, we can definitely like simply put the way you the way you've just said it there, like go for a, a maximal sprint or go for like a I gauge it and say, okay, I'm going to go at six tenths today. I'm going to go at six tenths. I'm going to build my, my base at six tenths. Mm. and know that I've got a still 40% or like a 30% in the tank that if I want to really, really go for it, yeah, you can do it some more, track your heart rate, bring it back down to, to 110 beats or like, uh, or like even if you let it half or let it kind of like three quarter yeah. come bring, bring it to way down then just go again. You know what I mean? That, that's mm-hmm. a switch or you don't need no equipment. You just need your body. And you can do it in so many different ways, right? You can skip, you can bear crawl, you can you can mm. run backwards, you can run forwards. There's a, there's a billion things you can do with that, man. Yeah, exactly. Just adapting yeah. as well. And then I, I don't know, maybe you know who it was. I think it was a fighter who said, I'd rather fight an excellent martial artist with average cardio than an excellent, uh, uh, than a average uh, martial artist with excellent cardio. Mm. I don't know who said that, but that makes a lot of sense. Like, yeah. you, you don't want to have like, yeah, have to said fatigue makes cowards of uh, yeah. uh, of, uh, of men, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just don't want to know. You don't want no part of that. I mean, the amount of time, like, because I think some of the the one of the worst things that people uh, 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 like don't understand, or no, rather, one of the things that people are astounded by with Sylvia is just how he can just keep going as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like forget the strength forget the technical capabilities it's just is like this dude is a fucking machine he just keeps going he keeps going how do you do that and um and so that makes him everybody's worst enemy it's yeah, like they just yeah, don't yeah. want to face him because he just doesn't stop he's a terminator man he's a terminator yeah <laughs> <laughs> love it man. i love it yeah do you know what that, that that's really what what um I relish about training with him is that you yeah. know you're going to build that horrible cardio like <laughs> resistance and um it's uh, that, that i really I don't, for some reason I, i've met a lot of people who kind of like weight train and they hate cardio yeah From day one i have loved cardio i've always enjoyed oh, yeah. like getting my heart rate to just dumb high levels and then yeah. just trying to like just trying to be there you know what i mean and like now from from his teaching I almost I get on a rower and if I want to do cardio I'll do it and then I'm I'm like I'll get my heart rate to to high high whatever and I say I'm going for like a two minute sprint or whatever I'll try and think in my head I'll try and be like okay I'm I'm pounding this this rower out but at the same time I want to think arm drag I want to think drop for a single leg I want to think like step to the left step to the right I want to kind of like chain these things together and then before you know it you're in you're in a situation where you're grappling with somebody and it's the like you, you the same thing we do at ray stevens right so like somebody will come in somebody will go out somebody will come in somebody will go yeah. out and you're still fresh I mean, you can put yeah. the pace on them even though they've come out of the queue right and it's like that's no better feeling than just like coming out of a session because you're always gonna get tired at the end of a session but it's like yeah. you kind of want that little win halfway through you think okay my cardio is still there i'm okay i'm okay i'm not dying yeah, yeah. That's, the fun, exactly. that's the fun part yeah man. and then even if it's not there it's kind of like uh, because of the abuse that you've gone through you just you you can mentally take it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like it's fine. Okay, cool. I may not be as fit, but I'm ready to take it, man. I'm that's ready it. to take it that's because it. I've been here before. And I get abused every time I come to this session. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You're just leveling up, just leveling up, just for being there, man. Not, exactly. not even not even taking part. You just leveling up and being there. Whether, exactly. even, even if you're like. <laughs> Yeah, you come in and just see everybody else doing it. You're just like, oh shit! You just yeah. scared, scared into feeling, uh, into feeling anxious. So you have to jump in yourself. Yeah, yeah. 
It's so good. It's so good. It's yeah, funny, I miss he's, yeah. You see, it just it gets to a point as well where people. <laughs> it's so funny. It's like people want to take a break, and then you just like <laughs> you just like I'll allow myself to take a break. No, yeah. man, no way. The, uh, the best thing, yeah, the best it builds you, man. It builds you, right? Too right. Too right. The best thing is the warm up. You know how yeah. it's like. It's like okay, such it starts eleven eleven o'clock, like. <laughs> <laughs> go through the first thing and the second thing and the third thing and the yeah. fourth thing and the five thing and then it's like 12 30. okay <laughs> <laughs> everyone's like what the fuck is it going on like has he forgot that we have to come here and do technique today but it's not he's like he's like he wants to get you to that place where you're just you're just bad so you can't yeah. like this this is a big thing that that happens in in that I, my experience i'm not, I'm not madly experienced I've, I've only been training uh jits for like the last year right but you go to different clubs and everyone sometimes you get um a very very uh what's the how can i put it like people are quite anxious and like they almost don't want to concede and i think in that in that like conceding you you both grow you both learn and this is something that i've been like privy to recently with my training with, with tj is that um you don't really you don't need to get the position every time because there's as much mm. much of a gain in getting the position as not getting the position because half the game's defense half the game's offense right if you're not building one you're building the other uh, but really people's mentality and my mentality as well when i first started was like i need to get on top i need to get on top and i need to mm. dominate and whatever it's it's not about that but when you get put through a warm-up like that you're so beat by the end of it that you you can't you can't like hope to put force into your technique you can't hope yeah. to put like pace into your technique so you're like you're just made to go slow and that that like it completely takes the ego out of the equation completely mm. takes the like the um the like anxiousness away because everyone look around everyone's bad man so it's like okay we're all we're all dead so we might as well just like fight slowly and just like like, it's, yeah. like pres preserve what we can you know what i mean yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I think I think that's that's a that's a thing that he does that I've not experienced in any other jitsu club. Like where where I'm so beat by the warm up that I have to like really focus to listen to the technique at the end of it. Otherwise, I'm not mm -hmm. going to get anything out of it. And even when we draw the technique, I'm so tired that I have to kind of go slow and I have to really like meditate on the technique because like there's no hope of me like exploding out of this. And then mm. before you know it, it's it's such a good teaching tool because next time you come in, you've retained it because you've done it in a in a better state. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah, I find uh, I find that's yeah, that's that's um, that's ideal where it's just um, where you're so tired. Mm. I mean, I obviously you don't want to be there all the time because then that just means you're burning yourself to the ground, right? But it's just when it does happen. It's it's a really good place to be because you're just like oh man I've got nothing else I can rely on I have to be technical right now I think my old instructor said uh, he goes you're tired good because now we know how good you are now we'll see how good you are at jiu jitsu and I was like yeah it's oh, legit that. it's true yeah. man is because uh, you can't rely on anything else you can't you ain't got your power you ain't got your cardio you're just lying there you're dead so all you got to do is uh, think about your way out of this technically right so uh, yeah so that was uh, that was uh, yeah that was a nice way of putting it and that's uh, that's i think that's a good place to good place to get to because you have to you have to focus as well you have to it's, it's interesting you, just, like, you can't you can't you can't again it goes down to you're so spent that the only thing you can do is focus on that one thing you've got in front of you right now <laughs> and then like the um what 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 jordan shallow said in that thing which was like you got to have the cardio to get to the 12th round what yeah. Sylvie's building is he's building the cardio to get yeah. to the 12th round and then he'll teach you the technique because it's almost like you gotta like you said like the the average fighter with the crazy cardio is the one you don't want to play and yeah. he and he's saying that look um you can you can build the great fighter in years and years and years but what you can build today is like a horrible cardio base or, or resistance to work and that that's mm -hmm. something that I like when i first started off pt it was it was almost like a a a a a, man, my, a mindset that I had was that I wanted to build my clients' resistance to work, whatever. And that that meant in my mind was just that, like, if I threw a lot of volume at you, you would be you would be again resistant to work. You would you would kind of um, you would have built a big cardio base. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I, I find that I found that with that they recovered much better. With that they kind of understood 
different movements much quicker and uh, yep. they kind of made them think on their feet and it's it's almost like a, a very very uh different change of pace to normal to regular life and that's why like that silview session is such a oh shit silview session you know what i mean like yeah. you come into the gym and your heart rate's already at 120 you know what i mean you just gotta yeah what day is it oh shit monday oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's exactly great. it's great Especially yeah you just walk in your heart rate's already jacked up because you know <laughs> you're just like oh shit oh shit i'm nervous <laughs> Yeah, man. It's brilliant. Uh, that makes me think about like uh, like your training approach, right? Like uh, for you, not just for yourself, but like for your clients. Like, uh, what's your what's your philosophy, uh, and what would you what would you class yourself as? As uh, the, the, what kind of trainer you are, and what you what kind of results you get people? Mm, uh, I think it's kind of it's definitely matured matured over time as like as I've mm. studied under more and more people, and mm. I think that's that's the first thing i can say is that like uh, i want to be a student of the game like you said earlier like the process the process like that that's the thing that we're here for you know what i mean like we're, we're not here to to we're not here for a short time we're here for a long time you know what i mean that that's the uh that's the the way in which i want to train my clients like i i don't i've done it in the past i've worked at up where where it's like a very much a smash and grab like the you can you can you can be the trainer that i think we are but really that's uh that's an anomaly there whereas whereas we want to be kind of um about self-preservation we want to kind of be about uh like you said obeying the system um mm. before we're about really pulling the wheels off and kind of destroying the body and i think yeah. uh, it kind of it kind of you i got into training by doing that to myself and i think really first you're 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 your own guinea pig, you know what I mean? You're your own guinea pig and you can you can trial things on yourself and you see that, you know what, I feel much better when I when I look at all the different markers as opposed to just looking at one, which is like, I'm gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna wreck myself. And that that unfortunately is is where I'd say ninety percent of the gym industry and like the fitness industry is kind of stuck, where like they'll just they'll, it'll be because because of marketing because of whatever they just kind of think that it's about going to the gym and beasting yourself and really like oh, when 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 i'll book in a client it's the first session we sit down and we talk and then we'll go through a movement assessment and then we'll go through like kind of you know what i mean like it's it's one of those things where it's it's not about how hard you can go day one like it's really never about that it's about your history about where you've been it's kind of about where you want to go and and really it's i feel like i'm just a teacher like i mm. i, I want to be a teacher like like uh and just what i've learned i want to be able to um give that to the client in in the way that they can receive it best at that time you know what i mean like it's not yeah. it's not about um clients sometimes uh it, i call them clients but like lack the only thing that differs me from them if i'm in their shoes and i'm going to jordan shadows i'm a client you know what i mean like it's just yeah. lack of experience it's lack of experience lack of actual know-how in that field that qualifies yeah. me to be sat here and you to be sat there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's it's about me taking what I've learned and relaying it to them and hopefully empowering them with that tool to move <clears throat> forward. And that that goes across all boards, all facets of like human physiology. You know what I mean, whether yeah. when and like we touched on it earlier with like different subsystems in the body, this is not something that I, I ever like thought about early doors. I only ever thought about like the barbell like the barbell is the weight right you know what i mean like that that was that was it like my my first my first like t-shirt uh t-shirt that i made for work was like lift is life that was the, yeah uh, that was the uh, that was the uh the slogan i love yeah. that like I, I, have, I have a business card up there it was just lift is life like that that, that is yeah. it and uh now it's like okay it's part of life but <laughs> there's other things too and, <laughs> yeah. um yeah it's sometimes about just like uh making clients appreciate that i think that, that that's where i'm at but yeah to answer your question i see myself as a kind of a teacher of of, of all things uh health and fitness yeah, mm. yeah. What, what about yourself man where, where did you start and what where are you kind of at now as um actually before we get to me just mm. what, another thing is like what uh what do people tend to come to you with and what result do you give them what do people tend to come to me with okay, quite quite varied um People will come for for weight loss. I think once they know my story, they'll come for that weight loss. Um, mm. they, they they know that I can relate to being like massively overweight. So I think they find a bit of a bit of comfort and common ground in that. Um, muscle mass gain is usually there. Um, 
and then you obviously you will have clients that are fairly happy with where they are and they just want to maintain and they want to kind of just understand a bit and learn a bit more but really everybody gets the same result this is something that i think i think is is same result to an extent where it, it's like uh we all almost have to revert to type and type is human you know i mean we are all human you know i mean so we need to appease these systems as opposed to run off with our own ideas i mean you you can want to be a powerlifter you can want to be a gymnast but at the end of the day like you can't be any of those things if you're not a good or a functioning human being first so appeasing that is really what i want to give people so the product that the, what they get at the end of it is usually like realignment <laughs> that, that, that term again right realignment with with what we are first mm. and then we can go and tack on your five by five or we can go and tack on your mobility plan in line with where you personally want to be but really mm. if, if i am like a, a a purveyor of anything it's like let's bring you back to where you actually work best and that relaying that information to the client is uh, is the most important thing I think for us because without that you're really you're shooting in the dark. You know, I mean, you wanna you wanna be something, but you're kind of building it upon unstable foundations. So first, it's about like getting those foundations set, and that could be a really arduous process for somebody. Like you could have to lose eighty kilos, or you could be ready to go day one. You know what I mean? Like that yeah. that that just comes. Uh, individual variance is, is is massive, man. So I think. Uh, yeah, in answer to your question, really, in a strange way, everybody kind of gets the same medicine, but mm. have to apply it in different ways. Yep. Yeah, I'm saying. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, yeah cause principally, principally, how we operate as human beings is rough, pretty much the same, right? It's like what we need as human beings is pretty much the same. Yeah, we need yeah, to yeah. optimize our sleep, get our nutrition on point, need to move well, and mm, uh, we need mm. to manage stress. It's like it's like everything's so heavily marketed nowadays that you think like like you, you can't. It's, it's 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 interesting because you have two like two facets of our industry now where one's going our way, where it's like very much movement specific, looking at the nuances of it, understanding um, just just the basics. But then there's that that's this like the TJ put this really eloquently the other day. Like I'm gonna steal his thing now um he was like that's the sense behind this that's the sense right that's like kind of the like you can't you can't argue with it it's fact right like we need to the scapula will rotate one way like you can't i'm training my scapula i'm doing this like that doesn't work yeah. you know what I mean? like like this is the fact of it it's not my opinion but then you have like the joe wicks and you have the like davina mccall workout on the other side and what he said was was that's the common side of things so people mm -hmm. can relate to that so that everyone's more likely to kind of go along with that Mm. and common common because of like it's been marketed a certain way or it's like the language they use is very very um direct and, and maybe we can learn we can definitely learn from them in that <clears> sense, <throat> in the sense that we've got a great senseful argument but they've got the common ground so it's almost mm. like you need both you just need to combine common sense right and you need to mm. kind of like move forward with that but but that that's that's on us to to see what the other side of the industry does well and for hopefully the other side of the industry to see what we do well but um i, I kind of think that we'll do the we'll do the moving you know what i mean we'll, we'll do the we'll, yeah. do, we'll do the ones that kind of like see um where people should be and, and yeah rightly so so that, that that's 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 kind of my take on it man yeah yeah yeah, yeah cool yeah. kind of makes sense man hmm. but how, about, how, about, how about yourself what's what's the where did you kind of uh envision your your clients kind of going when they come to you what's what's the what's the movements for them yeah so like my um my my approach is based in like uh my, my forte is movement mobility function basically mm -hmm. uh, well, stability is an intrinsic part of that as well so um that's just essentially optimize like doing well as a human being like optimizing your movement as a human being mm. but um essentially what i'm doing is the result that people are looking for is they feel limited in their body and uh, they feel like they can't rely on it. Um, it's not something that uh, they have a lot of confidence with. And then so with me, I can show them how to move well and uh, the confidence that comes with that. The, 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 the end result is that you have a body that you can rely on for the rest of your life. 
So that's um, that's how I that's how I approach things. So again, same same approach and uh, same mentality in that it's about move uh, understanding how to be a solid human being first in terms of how you how you move and then the other things that come along with that, mm. uh, which is stuff I mentioned like nutrition, stress management, and uh, and optimizing your sleep. But um, but ultimately, the end result is that you end up having a lot more confidence in your body, and you're able to use it in the ways that you wanted to. And you know, you kind of have these moments along the way where you're like, "Oh shit, I never thought I could do something like that, and now I can." Mm. And uh, and the and the boost and that comes with that, and not just for like, uh, not just for like, just just for the just for the sake of being able to do a a funky movement, let's say, but it's. Be, what what it does for the rest of your life right it's um it's the it's it's how uh, we don't ju- we don't just train for the sake of training we don't just train because uh if, if like if for example if somebody's just coming along and saying i want to do this because i need to lose a few you know i need to lose a few kilos and i just want to look better but there's something always underlying that that's just like the surface answer so what it essentially comes down to is, is like, okay that's what you want but what you what you end up getting is going to be a lot more than that it's going to it's going to affect you in a much more positive a much more positive way in a way that you never envisioned envisioned it as well so those um and that's that's my forte that's where i like to that's the space i like to stay in in that uh just like you said where you're you're a student of student of the game and that's where i'm a student of it as well i just i just love understanding how the body works how the body functions um, why it does things the way it does things, and and just keep uh, and just keep threading, threading that, um, uh, pulling on that thread. Even mm-hmm. that's where I like to take things, and because uh, then the deeper into that hole that I go, I feel like okay, there's a bunch of stuff that you end up doing away with because you know uh, you just don't need everything, or rather, it's that uh, it helps you shape your your kind of your high your high level. Uh, output uh, i guess is like uh, you you go you go deep into a subject and um so you can understand it so you can understand how to use it properly basically mm. so you own it and then you can discard a bunch of things that don't work for you and you can just keep the things that do work for you but at least you have that bank that you can always rely on basically and so that's so for me i'm like uh i'm more of a student of yeah movement mobility function what it is to be a strong, healthy, happy human being, mm. and uh, and then giving giving that result basically. That's really interesting, man. Really, really interesting. And uh, something you said there, it was like um, you come in for one for one remedy, but then there'll be four or five other underlying remedies. And I think that that definitely ties into. Um, mm. like I said like this this from the course that I'm doing that the subsystems in the body. Yeah. So it's like you can you can appease the musculoskeletal system, but who's to say that you're like your your cardiovascular system is on point? You know what I mean? Who's to say that yeah. your your like adrenal system is on point or like your 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 peripheral nervous system is on point? You know what I mean? Like there's all these things that we can that we have to kind of look at. And I think this is this is what makes our job like super, super interesting. And I, I think I want to segue into into one of the notes that I wrote down for this podcast was which, which was your your comedy stuff. Like right. that, that's a super like offshoot from yeah. anything like anything jujitsu. <laughs> he, he does jujitsu, he lifts weights, and he's a stand up comedian. Like, what? Like, yeah. how, does, how does that tie in? But then again, like, it clearly it appeases something in you, right? Because, like, you got, yeah, yeah. you got a big smile and you're a funny guy. Like, and well, what what does that mean, man? What, where, where did that come from? Yeah, so it's like, so it's not stand up comedy, it's um, improv, uh, improv comedy. Okay. 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 Oh yeah. So I don't know if you know the difference, but like uh, standard comedy is like you know you've got a uh, you've got a uh, you've got a script that you've written down basically that you're going to deliver to yeah. people on stage, whereas mm-hmm. improv is you go up on stage you don't know what the fuck's about to happen basically. Oh, okay. <laughs> if somebody can throw a suggestion at you and and then you just riff off of it. You know you develop a character in that moment, like as you're going along, you're literally developing something. And uh, you don't know you don't know what the hell's uh, you don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> so and yeah, it's it's amazing. It's it's incredible. Like I never thought of uh, doing it. So it, historically, like when I was a kid, it's always been something that I've enjoyed, like drama and stuff like that. And and so when I because and when I thought back on 
thought back on when I started doing it, I thought back on why am I enjoying it so much, not just for, you know, the craziness that it is, is like when I was a kid, I was like seven years old and I was like the lead in the primary school play. And I just remembered, I was like, oh yeah, I like the idea of performing, you know, it's quite, it's quite fun. It's quite, uh, there's, there's something about it. And uh, so getting into it was last June. Um, it was sun, you know, it was like little oh, fucking yes. man, like sun. <laughs> that, that gangster <laughs> who uh, just came along and he goes to me, bro, I just want to do something that makes me feel super uncomfortable. And uh, and I think improv is it. And I was like, wow, that is sick. And yeah, you know, how much of a gangster is he? He just comes up and he's like, here's something that I terrifies the shit out of me. I could never stand in front of people and just uh, chat shit and make stuff up. And uh, you know, tr- and you like you don't even try and be funny. That's the thing about improv. Uh, I'll explain that afterwards. But you you you're going to be funny. You know, that scares the hell out of me. That's what he was mm. saying. And. Um, and then he goes, do you want to do it as well? Like I've, there's a course and it seems like it's around London Bridge because he he'd only lives like 15 minutes away from me. I was like, bro, this sounds sick. Yeah, sure. Why not, man? So we started looking it up. And then uh, the, only, the only annoying part about it was we couldn't get our schedules to match so that we could do the same day, same course. Right. But, uh, but I went on a Monday night. I think he went on a Tuesday or a Wednesday night. And then he just started doing it. And it was yeah it was just so much fun it was just like you know you learn you start off by learning the principles of improv and then um uh yeah you start by learning the principles of improv and then you just play around with uh, you know the people who are in your um in your group and uh, it's people who play improv and then like it's just they just make such a good um a good environment for people to learn and like my first um my first instructor, just like, they're just super supportive. Like nothing is wrong. Basically, you can't really do anything wrong. You just, uh, you just start building towards what is in line with the principles of good improv, basically. So if you fuck up, it's amazing. <laughs> you know, they love that idea. So um, started doing it and I just loved it. And I just carried on going, basically. That was like a level one. It's an eight week course. Do it two hours, two and a half hours a week. And then... Um, built up to level two and then that's when i did my first performance at the end of level two and then level three uh is uh, there was a performance at the end of that as well so just um yeah it's just been it's just been a crazy amount of fun and so it resonated with me because it was like yeah I feel like this the performance aspect that's something that i like um i don't mind it but also it is something that is terrifying because you don't know what the hell is about to happen and and so, yeah, I learned a lot. Of, like the way I am is I, I whatever I'd learn is like um, I principally take it and just look at how it applies to life. And what improv has been really, really, the basic principles of improv are just, first of all, you've got to listen, right? So how important is that in life just generally? is uh, You said it the other day is that like you've got two ears, one mouth, you know, use them in that proportion. Yeah. And improv is the same thing where it's just you have to be able to listen because otherwise how are you going to build if you don't know what just came by listening? Mm. Then uh, another thing is, is a yes ending, which is just basically you, whatever goes, you you build on top of it as well. So you don't, you don't, um, uh, you don't shoot an idea down. You just riff off of it. You just keep mm. going with it. So that's great as well because then that allows um, – that allows for so much to happen. Like there's, there's been a number of times in improv, but there's one time in particular that I really remember where you're just like, how did that happen? Like, how did that come across? And how did it like, how it so perfect of a scene that you could never have written that kind of thing yeah. it came out of nowhere, just born in front of your eyes. And, um, and then, it, yeah, so you listen, you yes and, and, uh, and like those two main things is just so basic, but you just, uh, you, you, you run with that. And, and what's like, there's a few other things because lockdown, like I haven't been going, like I actually I haven't been able to uh, attend, uh, even they've started doing online classes, but I haven't been able to attend them. Mm. But, uh, so I haven't been in a few, uh, for a bit of time, but, uh, but essentially those two basic things. And then, and then the other things that come with it is just like you just have to start. Basically, you get you get on stage. There's a th- suggestion that's thrown. Even if you don't know what you're about to do, you you walk on and you do it. Like so, that. as an example, 
when when I did my first performance at the end of the level two and uh, our instructor who's leading the performance came along he goes uh, all right I need two people for this uh, for this next scene so we did we just jump up and, uh, and then in the audience he goes okay I need uh, give them a profession if somebody shouted out morticians right I was like I don't even know what the fuck a mortician is I forgot like I just blanked out right and then when he said oh two morticians this is going to be lively and I went wait why wouldn't it be oh <laughs> people that's it <laughs> so I realized in that moment I was like oh, okay yeah yeah they're the ones who like they just do like um they um they deal with dead people basically mm -hmm. so I figured out in that moment and then the other stipulation on that scene was that you when if I start a sentence uh, with the letter A, her uh, my scene partner's response has to be with the letter B, oh, wow. and then <laughs> mine is C, and then her D, and it carries on going like that. So you got to keep track of the freaking alphabet while you're doing it as well, right? But so don't know who the hell I am, like what kind of character I'm playing as soon as I get on stage. And then <laughs> when it starts, it's like, which letter am I going to start on? Somebody shouts out a letter and you're like, all right, we're going to start on that letter. And you don't know, yes, you don't know what you're saying. You literally, you're just building something as you go along. So the beauty of that was, uh, the lesson there is every single time is you just step on and you don't know what's going to happen, but you do it anyway, and something beautiful can happen. And even if it doesn't, is there's something interesting about improv, which I've tried to think about versus like stand-up comedy, where, where because the crowd is, it's, it's almost like they're rooting for you in a way as well. Like they want to see you fuck up, but when you do, it's actually funnier because mm -hmm. there's, some, there's something there's something about that uh, relationship with the crowd because they're giving you a suggestion and you have to run with it so they know that it's not scripted you know they know that you haven't written something down to try and make them laugh with what you've what you're doing is building something in front of their eyes and and there's an excitement with that uh, that is attached to that and so there's uh, so the the crowd are kind of rooting for you a little bit as well in that sense and then and even if you screw it up, it makes things even funnier. And that's what's great. That's what's great about improv as well. So the other lesson is there is, is like failure is your friend. You mm -hmm. are encouraged to make mistakes because that is, that is, uh, that is the source. That's where good shit happens as well, because you can build off of that mistake. It, it makes completely zero sense, but then you can just take the scene into a different tangent basically. And uh, so that's, that's fantastic about it as well. So, I mean, like, that's just a few things, but every time something amazing comes, uh, something amazing happens with it. So that's why that's one of the reasons why I stuck with it, which was I was just getting so much fun out of it as well. It's something completely different. Uh, you end up meeting a bunch of people where you start off, you don't even know their names, and you're playing these stupid games with them, right? And everybody's an adult as well, so it's uh, it's a straight it's a strange it's a strange. Um, removal from everyday life where you're in your zone in your zone in your zone and then you show up to do improv with a bunch of people that you don't know but you're all being really silly together so that's uh, that's amazing in and of itself and I could feel like uh, I had this sensation that my brain was just expanding laterally like I was growing my horizon when I was doing one of the warm up uh, warm ups during the class because you kind of have to warm yourself up just like you do warm up for a training session get your muscles primed because it's not your normal environment to be doing improv you had to show up and you had to go there and like get yourself into into the zone by playing some games and just freeing up your mind allowing whatever comes through your subconscious to just come out and not refraining so you you end up playing these games and uh, when you when whenever i do them i can just feel my mind just go from here to uh, start doing this i i literally feel it's just the weirdest sensation i can feel my brain just start to expand and it just opens up and um and so i liken it to loosening up your muscles for a workout you're loosening up your mental muscles for uh, uh for thinking laterally and thinking in different directions with all those silly games that you play and i think that i think that's super useful as well because in terms of your own creativity in terms of what you do just allowing you to think 
in uh, just think laterally, not just continuously thinking in 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 the same line that you always you always are. It just gives you an option to think in a different way, mm. and opens up your horizons, and uh, and so that's cool. And then also the other thing about it is 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 like there's you as an individual who shows up, but it's not just uh, it's not it's not really about you. It's about how you perform as um, as as a, as a team on the stage. So, for example, if I come up with a punchline and everybody cracks up about it, it's only that only happened because somebody right before me set it up beautifully for me to say that line, right? And to be for me to be able to think of that thing to say, because again, it's not scripted. So you're thinking as you, you're figuring out to what to say as you go along or what to do as you go along. So there's there's a lot of credit that goes to the person who essentially set you up for it. And and because the idea is you, you're always building on each other's ideas as well, so there's very much a team. It's very much a team effort as well. So that was quite nice. You know, you think you could think to yourself that you go and do it, and it's a and it's like a uh, you know you could be there and like think I'm going to take center stage, you know, if you wanted to. But if you do that, you're drowning out what's good about improv. You're drowning out where the creativity could come from. So you have to, you have to let others, um, others light shine, shine their light as well. Because if you don't, then not a lot, is, uh, not a lot is good's going to come from that. And you can kind of tell that as well. The vibe is, the vibe goes off a little bit in 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 the performance, and uh, so that was cool as well. It's just how you interact with um, your your team and like you know the energy and the vibe that you pick up from them. And that was also that's also part of the training as well, where you just you you think how you adopt a certain body language, and then you get told to freeze, and then the and in the class environment, the instructor goes, okay, so what does that person's body language suggest is happening with the person that, um, that they're interacting with in the scene? Mm. And uh, you know, you could pull a suspicious face, or you could pull a really happy face, or you could be angry, or you could like bow your head down is like, okay, that person's shameful or whatever. And, uh, and so that's cool as well, because, you know, how are you using your body? How are you using your language? How are you using your expressions uh, to, to communicate what's going on in a scene? And so, yeah, when it comes to, when it comes to taking that back into life, there's just more is like, I guess it's more, uh, I'm more aware of how I'm coming across mm. and the idea of um, just, just, just riffing, just, just going and just continuing and building conversations uh, without having to feel like they've got to go anywhere, you know, yeah. because you get a lot of it. Like, you know, me and you, yeah, we've got a couple ideas on what we could, what we could talk about, but uh, we don't even get through them because, we end up talking about other stuff, you know, and it's cool because that was super interesting, and uh, and you know it just it made things it made life better for it. Mm. So that's um, that was what's been great about doing that whole thing. Never, if Sun had ever come up to me, I don't even think I would have I would have done it. And uh, and then so doing it has been uh, yeah, it's been a lot of joy. There's been a lot of joy from that, and it's been a lot of fun. And you explore a part of yourself which uh, you didn't know you had or didn't realize you could build and you know the kind of creativity that comes with that because the kind of people that you meet as well everybody's like super different got their own little quirks and and we you could just make it work you know you can make it work by working together in these scenes and uh, so um so it just goes to show also that you know you can you can develop your creativity no matter who you are and no matter what uh, what kind of background you're coming from uh, you know there's some people who are be more creative than others, but, uh, or rather I'd start cause, and another thing is like, I don't necessarily feel like I'm that creative, but then when I do that, it, um, it makes me realize that in some ways it doesn't, you don't have to be mm -hmm. because if you just bring yourself and bring your own best version of yourself to the table, that can be enough to make the whole that is enough to make the whole thing work where, you know, and me, I'm a person who just follows principles really well. So if some, I don't have to know 
the techniques is like if somebody d tells me the principles of improv is like listen yes and make mistakes and just run with that i'm like okay cool so in the back of my mind all the time is listen yes and make mistakes listen yes and make mistakes don't worry about being perfect you're not even trying to say anything funny or clever that's the other beautiful thing about it as well you're not trying to be funny you're not trying to be clever you just you just say whatever the hell comes to your mind and it just so happens it could be funny and it could be clever and uh and so if you just show up with the intent of just following the principles you're going to you're going to you will build some extra level of creativity on top of that on top of what you already got but even if you don't you're you're going to be bringing something to the party which no one else has still mm. because which is you which is your way of thinking and which is your way of building uh building an idea and uh, and that was uh, that was super cool and that's uh and yeah i mean freaking out i could talk about it all day <laughs> it's just uh, how it can, how it can uh, bring something to you and how uh uh, how it, uh, how it can, yeah, essentially I can, you can use something like that to make your life better. If you just think, uh, think a little bit about how you apply the principles outside of yeah. the, the, the thing itself. That's very cool, man. Very, very cool. You can tell you're talking right from the heart there. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool because like you, you've got no like basis in that reality. We talked on that last time. Like you, you just, son, just came up to you and said, let's, let's do this because I'm a crazy yeah. guy. And uh, look how, like, how it's kind of fit. You know what I mean? It's like fit so well to the point yeah. where you've only done it a little while and you can talk about it so so uh, vividly. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, while you were talking, it just kind of kept coming across my mind that that's like when we develop as children, we kind of develop in that in that realm. You know what I mean? So that there's no judgment. There's no, there's no kind of like, uh, there's no right answer. No one has the right answer. No one's worried about what they're going to say. No one's worried about what anyone's going to be offended or whatever. You know what I mean? There's just completely free reign. And I think that's maybe, um, that's just what I heard when you said that. I was like, okay, this this is like when we were kids. Like we, we, there's, there's, like we can sit here right now and we, we can put sentences together, but really we're just old children. You know, we're just grown children. You know what I mean? Like we never stop being that that thing. But then What, what strikes me about what you just said is how scary it is for us to just be that way more. You know what I mean? Like how many, how many like uptight businessmen you see like walking through London with their top shirt buttoned or anything, you know, you just need to chill them out. Like, <laughs> you, you, you need to just go to improv class or you need yeah. to go, go to Jiu Jitsu, feel wiped out. You know what I mean? That, 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 that's where like you have that imbalance. And like, I feel like um, you said this a couple of podcasts ago, I think where like you, you almost want to do something without having there be a goal without having there there be a time specific measurable achievable target attached to it yeah. whereas what you've just said there just sounds very organic and sounds mm. very like um sounds very day one and i think you you've got to be you've got to be quite day one sometimes because it takes all the pressure away you know what i mean there, mm. there is no there is no like expectation there is no like preset existing like do this do this do this there's no method you know what i mean it's, it's just kind of like you're just being and i think yeah. that that's what we get away from doing get away from being is we actually get away from being you know what i mean and i think um in in the forum of what you've just described it's it's it sounds really really progressive man it sounds really helpful and yeah. uh yeah it sounds like something, something something some sounds like something that people should do yeah yeah sure. fully, man. i i recommend it to everyone i'm like it doesn't matter who you are you will you will you will if you don't have fun doing it, there's something wrong with you. Number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the second thing is, is you will get so much out of it. You know, it's just, um, uh, you, you just, yeah, you'll just get a lot out of it. And, uh, even if it's just like with a bunch of people that you would never resonate with on a, on an every mm. day, you're all there for a reason, which is just to have some, have some laughs. Like you're just being organic, you know, it's improv comedy. It's just uh, like, yeah, what you said is exactly right. It's just about being organic and whatever happens, happens, whatever comes, comes. And, uh, and yeah. And from those, like there's been some like just beautiful scenarios that have happened in, in scenes as well, which you just, you just crack up. You just think I couldn't, don't know how that happened, but it was, uh, and well, actually that's another thing as well, which is great about it is um, honesty. And you get taught to build, out of um out of honesty as well so whatever feels true to you in that moment use it don't try and shun that out and i've noticed as well and i've, I've definitely seen it where when people have been honest in a scene 
it's uh, it's accelerated it. It's excelled it to another level. And when when they haven't, you can tell they're kind of holding back and uh, they're not being themselves completely, or rather, they're not um, they're not doing what's uh, true. Because you're building a character, it doesn't have to be you. It could be something that is uh, the exact opposite of you, for example. But but it's got to come from a place of honesty as well. When you do that, when you're speaking with that level of honesty. Uh, and performing with that level of honesty, there's um, you just get so much more out of it. There's there's a lot more buy-in from the audience as well, and uh, and it just makes shit a lot funnier, even if it's not uh, even if it's not intended to be funny as well. Because there was uh, one great example of that was when uh, in in a class, um, the two guys got given uh, pirates as characters. So they stood up and they were like, okay what what's their profession you know and then somebody shout out pirates like, okay cool and uh, so the instruction was also as well just speak honestly to each other and they started this scene they were about a minute in and you weren't like uh, people what we were watching it and you're not really buying into it and uh, what they did was uh, you know they were just having a conversation it was kind of like small talk small talk small talk and it's like okay it's taken a while to get anywhere and then the instructor just halted them and he said look it's fine you guys are doing great, but I want you to be honest with each other now. So whatever you feel like is the most honest thing to you right now, mm. I want you to go and use it and say it in the scene. And they're like, okay, cool. And he goes, go. And then mm. <laughs> as soon as he said go, in his pirate voice, one of, the, uh, one of the guys on the stage just went, I'm sad all the time. <laughs> 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 and it was so fucking funny. We all burst out laughing. And it but it was him being honest about being really sad. Is juxtaposed by it being a freaking pirate, you know? <laughs> it's like a pirate being sad. And that was also the point. So they built a scene on then they ended up building a scene on uh, pirates being sad and no one understanding that being a pirate can be tough or you can be sad because suffer from depression and stuff like that. And it was so funny. But it was so heartfelt as well, oh, and uh, and that was and it was a beautiful scene. And look, I'm talking about it like I remember it because the yeah. bit they were saying before that, I don't remember what the hell they were doing. But as soon as it became honest, it was freaking hilarious, and it was and it was really heartfelt. And it was quite a beautiful little scene between the two of them, mm. and and that's what's great as well because it goes to show that the if you're being honest and you're acting out of integrity, then the uh, you have you have so much more opportunity out in front of you. So that's uh, that's another another great thing that you know that gets hit home from that. So the more honest you are, like um, at least in that way, you can be satisfied with yourself, and then also uh, that you put your you, you know you put your honest self out there, you put your best version of yourself out there, and also uh, the outcome that can come from that is a lot more likely to be fruitful than if you weren't being honest. With yourself from the start and so that was that was a really cool lesson in that i like that man that's really really cool that's super honest like you said honesty right and mm. uh what struck me when you were talking was like sub context like yeah. like you can say that okay we're here and we're just improving comedy and, and whatever but the the reason in my mind why you're picking up on that stuff and you're remembering it and it's having such an effect on you is because there's a resonance in that room you know mm. I mean, there's a resonance where everyone's being honest, everyone's being fun, no one's giving a shit, no mm. one's being judgmental. You know what I mean? And that yeah. that's such a such a nice place to be in, no matter what the setting. It could be in a coffee shop, it could be jujitsu. You know what I mean? It could be anywhere. And really, that's that's kind of harkens back to what we are, and we need that. We we love that when it's our family, mm. and everyone's sitting there like stone faced. It's like no one likes that. You know what I mean? Like no one enjoys that. You know what I mean? Let's exactly. not. Let's not let's not do those reps you know what i mean let's not do those reps. Let's, let's do these good reps that kind of like yeah. actually appease us make us happy um make us better people and um yeah man that's that's um like like the, the whole the point the the the, the, the expression like sub context so it's it's you're doing that but really what your body is picking up on at a, like a neurological level and like what the brain's probably lighting up from is all those other things that are just there in the room but no yeah. one's really like saying oh that was honest or that was cool that was funny like but we're, we're feeling them at some mm. level you know what i mean and that, yeah. that that resonance is just there and that that's so uh that's so necessary man super necessary right yeah super necessary <laughs> <man. Pretty laughs> yeah. Like, yeah so as as because as an audience member you don't have to you don't have to work that stuff out you know what i mean like uh 
as somebody who's going on stage to perform, you start to realize that if you follow these principles, then you're more likely to get a good performance out of it. And, um, but then the audience doesn't know why that's going well. They just resonate with it, right? And mm-hmm. it just it cracks them up. You know, that's ultimately what ends up happening. It makes them laugh. So you don't even have to know that that's what's happening. And, uh, and you realize that that's, that's what human connection is about. That's what you realize that connecting with someone properly is about. Whereas if it was, if we went on stage and did the opposite, the audience still doesn't have to know the principles of why it's going wrong, but they'll know, they'll know it's going wrong. Right. They'll know it's not feeling mm, right. like a, a good performance and they just won't resonate with it and they won't feel good about it. So, um, so I guess that goes back to like, again, energy. Like we, I think we talked about like uh, the first, first chat we had where you can pick up on what's going on without there having to be anything tangibly, uh, tangibly logically said about it. And so, yeah, it goes to, goes to show that if you're, uh, if you're acting, behaving in a way, which is you being, I guess you being your honest self and uh, what else is there to it? But it, that's, that's essentially it. And not holding back in a way, then mm. you get a lot more out of the people around you and the people get a lot more people around you get a lot more out of you than if you did, did the opposite. And um, yeah, so it comes down mm. to, I think that's what I like, it's funny because it I was trying to like articulate it as I was, formulate this new thought that I had around it. But, uh, but yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to know what's like uh, the ins and outs of it, but you can just pick up on that energy. And, uh, and so I think that's, um, I think improv, yeah, that's a good way of also showing it as well, which is you, uh, the, the more you'd follow the principles of a good performance, the more you get out of it. And then you extrapolate that out to life. It's like, if you follow the principles that allow you to live your life the way you want to live it, then you will, uh, you will get a hell of a lot more out of it as well. So, um, yeah, so I think, I think essentially that's what I was trying to say. And that's what you can kind of see happening and feel happening when you're doing improv and you're doing it well. And yeah, so it's really, it's really, really cool. I think it's a great tool. Um, it's just like, yeah, I can't wait to go back to physically doing it um, with people again. Right. Can just because uh, yeah. it just seemed like one of those things where as soon as I started doing it, and then I did it a little bit longer, and I was like, you know what, this is just a mainstay. Like the main things that I will do in terms of other physical hobbies is like always like grappling, and it seems like improv is the other thing. It's just like I want to just keep that going and see where I can take it. Yeah, so um, I like yeah, highly recommend it to other people because there's just so much you can get out of it. I'm down, man. I'm down. Next time, <laughs> yeah. next, next time London opens up, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, hungry Browns coming coming to some improv classes. <laughs> next time it'll be improv Brown. Improv Brown. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, but no, I, I, you know what? That that sounds so legit because because what you said there, like about honesty. Um, really you can't build anything without that right you can't like well, what do we know about like well, with relationships whether it be like oh i i go to the gym and i lift 100 kilos or you go to the gym and you lift five kilos like no it's like you you can't you can't try and be on that path if you're not on that path don't be on that path you know what i mean but you can build to it you yeah. just have to be honest with where you are day one and i think if if you strip everything back and you take it in a place where there's no there's no judgment and i think that's a huge huge thing people feel very comfortable to be where they are and there's, they don't feel any, any which way about it. So they're more willing to just accept and just keep going and keep kind of like, uh, um, yeah, just, just not feel any which way about it. You know what I mean? Like that, that with, with, with other things, with other kind of marketing ploys or whether you're comparing yourself to somebody else, which you, which is become, I think human nature. Um, you're always going to have that barrier to entry within your mind. Mm-hmm. And you don't ever want that because then at the end of the day, you can't progress because you're thinking you're somebody else or you're comparing yourself yep. to somebody else where that's, that's such a, such a, a mental stopper. And then obviously we know that like, if, if you're not on your, your, your mental game, you can't do anything. But like, as soon as you align yourself, like just drop or drop all your shit, leave it at the front door and be like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be me 
and I'm just going to try and I'm just going to like be present almost. Um, mm. Then you, as you said, like you said a few times, like you are enough to be in that room. You know what I mean? You are yeah. enough to be in that room. And that's just affirmation of that. And then you can carry that forward to so many things in life, whether it be, oh, I'm going to have a conversation with somebody like, I don't know what to say. It's like, you don't need, you don't need to know what to say. You just need to have yeah. the conversation. Maybe you bring their mind to something else. Yeah. I mean, maybe you kind of, you help their day irrespective. And um, yeah, man, that, that kind of, that definitely will, will uh, um, filter off into so many other areas in life. And I think mm. it's really, really important to, to have that. Like, that's the kind of, that's the kind of environment that you'd hope to create in a, in a, coaching environment you know what i mean like you wouldn't want to have somebody come in day one and judge them and be like oh well you're in this position because you're shit and this and you're shit at that and it's like yeah no it's it's not about that you know what i mean it's about kind of just just um seeing you as you are and then just lay in the stage and be like okay let's let's see where the chips fall let's see where the yeah. chips fall and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of we'll go from there but yeah. um yeah man it's really interesting really, really interesting I, you can tell that when you speak about it you speak about it from a very genuine place like like that's that's hit you as an adult so you can articulate it really really well and yeah. but it's actually hit the core of you to this to the point where you speak about it and it, you just like you can see it's infectious you know what i mean like you yeah. i want to come i want to yeah. go to your class like I, i'm in you know what i mean like whoever yeah. listens to that we'll be there too you know what i mean like yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, wait, that's okay. uh, <laughs> that's it man that's it you start a movement yeah that'll be epic man it'll be yeah, so good sure. kids it was uh I was glad that son, in a way, couldn't carry on with it because uh, I just wanted to see him do a performance as well. Like I wanted to go along and like see how he'd uh, how he'd been getting on with it. But uh, uh, but yeah, I, I just find yeah because it's it's just great. It's just it's a lot of fun. I recommend anybody to do it. And, sure. And yeah, I think there was something you said there which just made me think is. Um, yeah, if you just like if you just follow the principles basically is uh you you get you get you get places you know mm. and, uh, what was it that you said it was like um oh man it was just it was like you said about honesty but anyway it was just it just made me think of like you know following the principles and because that's what it comes down to because when you're training someone it's like if they want to put on muscle mass like okay follow the principles of putting on muscle mass don't follow the th next shiny object that looks like uh, it's going to be a fun training session you mm. uh, and that's another big thing that i've learned from working with you specifically is the like it well i knew this anyway but putting into practice in a strength program that was um that was uh, that was it definitely hit it home for me for some reason just more than anything else which is it's just it doesn't have to be sexy man it's just and it's never glamorous as well so all the shit that you get to see on instagram and everybody pumping out this movement and that movement and whatever it's like strip it all the way back strip it all the way down like don't even worry about that kind of thing because it's going to come down to a few unglamorous unsexy principles that you need to follow consistently and that's going to get you places rather than trying to chase the thing that looks cool you know and because with strength training for example if you want to stop pr and deadlift or you want to start nailing that movement all you're going to do is a deadlift you know <laughs> like a couple times a week and some accessory movements which are going to help you uh, eliminate other weaknesses along the chain but uh but that's not like, all right, I'm going to go from here, then I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do oh, this next exercise, and that looks like it's going to be funky, and then you know, six weeks later, you don't know where the hell you are mm. in terms of your deadlift. It doesn't work that way. You just you just got to bash out the reps in the right thing, and you realize that you could. And I think this is where, like, what I was saying about, I like going into the hole, like going deep into something, and then realizing that even if I do away with ninety percent of it, I'm totally okay with that because at least I have a good understanding of it and it's the same with training as well is like you could do away with 90 percent of everything that you've ever been taught with uh, uh how to how to train or what you need to do to train yourself to be whatever you want to be whether it's strong or cardiovascularly fit or whatever you just gotta you, you strip it right down you realize it's, it's you only got to focus on a small number of things it's not so many things that you got to you got to work on because essentially we know that principally these are things that work and you just have to follow them to the, to the degree that you need to and do it consistently and it's not glamorous and it's not sexy but it's going to get you the outcome 
that you're looking for. Mm. You know, and so and true. I think that's important. I think that's important to realize, which is just follow those, just follow those damn principles. Because yeah. like improv, the principles there, like listen, yes, and and make mistakes. Like, uh, how do you make people laugh doing that? Mm. You will have no idea. <laughs> you have to just fucking do it, and yeah. then you'll realize that there's plenty of laughs to be had from it. Training. You just need to focus on these main movements and do them till the cows come home and then you're going to be where you're at. And then the outcome is sexy and glamorous, you know, and you just got to appreciate the process for what it is. But the outcome uh, is exactly what you you were hoping it to be. You just uh, got to realize that you got to strip away all the crap and uh, and just focus on a few few main things, which are the principles. Too right, man. Too right. Yeah, really well put. Really well put. And that, that, that's do you know what i can liken it back to training so mm. uh, i come back to less than and i've 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 not done any kind of stand-up training in a long time like i started off boxing when i was like 16 17 right and um, me and my mates would go from school and um then i really really enjoyed it like loved any kind of stand up like just just throwing like never never never, never really knew how to throw kicks but but hands was always always fun mm. and i always liked having a strong like straight jab and a strong right hand couldn't really throw hooks couldn't really throw uppercuts or anything else but just like the one two was just my bread and butter and um and coming back to less than now tj has been doing some striking for a little while and um he kind of he involved me back into it and it through through kind of i think exposure to ufc watching more boxing nowadays because when i started watching when i started doing it back in the day i didn't watch any boxing i just enjoyed going and uh it was just a form of expression for me right so uh i found what worked well for me but i think through watching other people and whatever i've wanted to 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 be more so i want to try and be flamboyant with my movement and i want to try and watch tyson so i'm not trying to throw the body shots and trying to step out and jump this side and jump that side and it's yeah. like but really what i need to do is i need to just double down on realizing that if i stand in front of you and i take one step to the left you can't hit me you know if i take one step back you can't hit me if i take <laughs> one step to the right and i fire my right hand across your face you're getting it. You know what I mean? Like that's <laughs> yeah. how simple it is. That's literally yeah. how simple it is. Like at the end of the day, it will only ever come down to one strike, one step, one slip of the head. You don't need to be about everything. You know what I mean? Like you see boxing nowadays, it's like mad pad work. Da, 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 da. Slip this, slip this, slip this, slip this, step over there, run over there. It's like, no, we need to just distill this back down again. And um, this goes back, TJ sent me this video and he's talking, to, I think it was, it's, it's, I'm going to get this wrong. Right? It's either Parnell Whitaker or it was somebody from from that era and he's talking about how in boxing right now there's not there's too many trainers but there's not enough coaches mm. like the, co- the coaches would 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 actually like sculpt the fighter and make him or her do the base stuff really really well whereas the trainers nowadays will like have to appease instagram they have to appease the agent and they have to kind of make the fighter look good and get the best deals for this and get the best movie role for that and it's like are you gonna fight conor mcgregor next you're gonna do this and it's like we don't need any of that shit you know what i mean we just need to be like right there with the basics like move your head like just move you like this much and this much like that works you know what i mean that, that, that that's like that's what works and at the end of the day like if if i if i know all this shit but then I get in the ring and I get clapped with the first left jab. I'm like, oh shit, none of it works. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what to do. Whereas if I slip that first jab, I'm like on cloud nine. You know what I mean? Like, I can, I can just like move out of the way of that and be like, cool. I'm happy. My training worked. Like, big tick in the box. That's that's like that affirmation that, you know, you do a little bit and it gets you so, so far. And it's the same thing with your improv. You know what I mean? Like, you just show up on day one and you don't even know like what can happen, but you stick to those like small core base principles. And you can just build upon that because it is it's, at the end of the day, it's like that's the way for a reason. You know what I mean? Like one of one of the boards, one of the, the things I'm looking at on the board here is like one of the sayings. Sorry, is never stray from the way. It's so simple, but it's like it's so legit. Like just 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 stay the path, right? Stay yeah. the path, and um, it doesn't really matter what you're doing. There'll be a set of principles behind it. Like get there as quickly as you can and try and align yourself because if you're off you're mm. not going to be able to like, you're just not going to appreciate it for what it is. And like, how many yeah. times you get a client, like I've, I've had a client's like working in public gyms and um, they'll just be off in the weeds. Like I want to do this. And I'm going to be, I want to, I want to be like supermodel ready in, in five, five days time. It's like, can you do it? It's like, what? Like, what are you talking about? Like this, you don't understand the work that's involved in changing you into, yeah. into whatever you're, you're thinking you need to be. And it doesn't need, it doesn't even just start on a treadmill. It needs to start on your, on your mental state. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's some people are so far removed from that 
but the the win is always like almost centering yourself and then realizing what the task is and then going at it with that laser focus you know what i mean like just we started this conversation by talking about what kind of uh focuses you and, and how like stripping it back the same as this month right same as this month we're stripping it back we've got no food we've got yeah. no water so we're going to just we're going to just chill on that right we're going to just we're gonna, that's going to that's going to kind of sustain us um but it works you know what I mean? it totally works because th- there's this almost like this like like you talked about going deeper into something i've, I've kind of talked to my clients and, and this week one of my clients was learning how to do the hip airplane right so shifting on the pelvis and like mm. the wobbling all over the place and falling and it's like that's cool. That's your body figuring it out. That's literally your body figuring it out. And if you went to improv and it was my go and I went, uh, that's good. That's fine. That's totally fine. Because like you, you, that's your body figuring it out. You know what I mean? Like that, that's just a physical manifestation of that. You stumble and you fall or you don't quite get your words out properly. Don't worry about it. Like just keep moving forward. Right. Next time it comes around, you might do it again and do it again and do it again. But eventually you'll think, Oh, Gorinda, what the hell? Like, why'd you say that? You know what I mean? Like, you you, you just have some crazy affirmation and a cra- crazy um, um, moment and you'll balance or you'll step forward. But it, it, all, it only comes back down to that same thing where it just you don't need to uh, overcomplicate things. You just need to try and stick to the path and uh, and you'll move forward, man, for sure. Yeah, completely, man. Yeah. Sure you. Because um, yeah, the amount of times it happens as well like i'm i'm more acutely aware of it now as well with uh coming off the pot even if it's like on a day, daily basis so um one of the things i started doing was like locking not locking but putting my phone away in a drawer mm. when i need to focus for a few hours and uh, and the clarity that i achieve from that is just something so simple it's literally out of sight out of mind whereas if i have it nearby i will be a little bit too distracted and then when i finish the day Mm. it's like i've strayed from the path basically i feel like i've my here's the path and i feel like i've been dotting around with several different places because i've had my focus go from oh i'm doing this thing that i'm working on my laptop to let me just check oh i got a message alert oh to here's that email that i needed to look at which i almost forgot about but i see the alert come in and then then there's that thing that's back on the laptop and it's like everything just bouncing around and uh, you definitely it just feels like you've strayed from the path basically on on that micro level because it's like it's a day but then if that happens on another day and another day and another day then it's like you're so far gone you have to take a little bit of effort to bring yourself back again and so on the days where i've um so just literally i've shot my phone away is because it's not just out of uh like right now i can see my phone and that's kind of distracting me now that i've noticed that it's right there whereas if i put it somewhere where i can't tell that um that it's around me yeah even though i know it's in the room with me but i put it in i put it in the drawer um it's like it's like you've just uh, yeah you just lock something away you've just uh, it's it's not there it's in its own world now you can't you can't get there and uh, and that's kind of liberating as well so then then i'm back on the path and you can just keep going and uh, and then that allows and that's just like on a micro level but that plays out for the macro thing that you're going for as well because if you're constantly distracted like that then you're uh, you're left not being anywhere near as efficient as you could be and mm, mm. you're you're not you're not going where you want to be too and, wrong, man. Too like, yeah, yeah. that's so that's that for me that's been that's been a big thing and it's and it's makes for me it's also made me realize like uh, yeah, how addicted i can be and i am to this thing that's in front of me right here because it's it's personalized to you is like it's everything mm. that you need something that you communicate with to be and 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 more than that as well it's a source of information essentially so i can easily get locked up and locked in on this thing and when i do i feel i feel different i can tell my brain just doesn't feel like it's in the same space as uh, as it needs to be uh, to actually perform well so again so i could be looking up information on my phone but there's something about looking at it on my phone versus researching it and on like a laptop and writing about it because there's the distractions that are available on the phone i could go look up something else i could go on an app i could uh, get a message come through there's there's something that's nowhere near as efficient about it and then that makes you makes you stray mm. so for me that's that's been a has been an interesting interesting little thing to play with and i can feel how it's almost like i feel again like feel something going on in my brain which just feels different mm. when i'm with it and when i'm not with it.
you there. So true, man. So true. That, that's, that's a crazy thought, but it's 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 bang on the money, man. When I when I go to Kenya to visit my dad, mm. it's like I'll just leave my phone. I'll leave my phone, and it's uh, it's such a freeing experience, man. Such a yeah. freeing experience from 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 anything that like I, if if it's if it's like deathly important, you ring my dad. I'll hear about it. You know what I mean, like like apart from that, I don't need to know. And um, yeah, the separation. I think that separation that, that allows you just to just to recenter and kind of think about the things that are actually important. Whereas there's nothing going on Instagram that's important. You know, mm-hmm. Like if it's important, it will happen to be right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but we'll spend time and hours and whatever just kind of stuck to it. But um, yeah, it's, it's almost like we've been given this tool, especially with the phone, that you've not really been given a manual for, and that manual is not really. It's 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 like you can you can again like back down to that subtext thing. It's like you, you're appeased by this thing, but like you said, it's for you. It's there to kind of keep your interest, but at what cost? You know, yeah. At what cost is it keeping your interest? At what cost is it kind of, is it making you um, distracted from things you really should be doing, you could be doing? I mean, you, will you ever now be able to do those things because you're so engrossed, ingrained in this? And like you said, if you stray from the path so many times, the effort it takes to get back on the road is so, so much harder. You know what I mean? And mm. like, Sometimes you might even need somebody to help you do that. But really, how many times is somebody going to come take your phone off you? Like, you know, you yeah. just need to, you need to like, just get that point as an adult. But like, it's, 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 it's like a, it's like a toy for an adult, right? It's like a, yep. literally a toy for an adult. But then you see people giving it to their kids and you think, like, no, don't do that. Yeah. Like, don't do that. You don't like, I, I don't ever want my child to have a phone, like have a phone, but have a Nokia 3210. You know what I mean? Like you're going to have, <laughs> you're going to have snake and you're going to have one to one. And I want to see an aerial coming out of your shit rather than, rather than <laughs> like, uh, rather than anything to do with TikTok or anything like, you know what I mean? I just, I just don't want oh, you yeah. connected to this world. Like it's not, it's nothing, there's nothing in it that, that you need, you know what I mean? As, as, as a, as a kind of growing child or whatever. Yes. Obviously we have our benefits in terms of social media or whatever, but there's, there's, there's a text to that as well as a subtext and there's a time and a place. Mm. But really at the end of that, you almost want to have like two modes on your phone. You want to have like work mode where it's like a work phone and then be like, okay, meditation mode where it just like calms and it just plays nice music yeah. and it just has a different tone. But I don't know, maybe you just need to, maybe the answer is just stuff it in a drawer and just turn it to piss off. You know what <laughs> what I mean? That's what you need. Yeah. That's what you need. Yeah, but, exactly. Yeah. Like, get out of here. It's like, yeah. a- nuke the option <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the one man. that's the one it's, it's like it's like uh our, our segue to like older generation they like have no yeah. they just don't want, they, they, they don't get it and you kind of want them not to it's cool that they don't get it because <laughs> they're just not swayed by this stuff you know what i mean they're yeah. just not kind of like it doesn't mean anything to them like oh someone's got a new song out or this that and they're just like who cares who cares yeah. you know, there's less noise in their lives that's why they always seem like more like on it Sometimes you see kind of people in our generation who are just like all over the place, but you don't see that in that older generation. Mm. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's too easy to get sucked in. Too right, man. Too right. Too many shiny objects. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. That's the one, man. That's the one. I will say, shall we call it? Call it. Call it. That was a strong one. That was a strong one. Where did that two hours go, man? Two hours 12. That was so strong. Strong. (laughs) I don't even know where the time goes, man. Really good, man. Really good. And do you know what? Listening to you talk about the uh, the improv stuff is brilliant, man. Brilliant. Oh. Yeah, man. Dude, too right. I think people are going to love that. They'll really, really resonate with that. You get you get a ton of DMs for that stuff for sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure, man. Yeah, brilliant. Really, really cool. Uh, well, I, kinda, I wanted to bring it up for the last couple of podcasts, but then uh, right. today, which is the perfect. Yeah, yeah. Really perfect. Because I, I, like you said, I didn't know the distinction between what you were actually doing and what you were, what, what I thought you were doing and what you are yeah. doing. And um, yeah, the way you put it today, brilliant. Yeah, sick, man. No, I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Is um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's just one of those things I like talking about. I've done it like, uh, oh shit, it's April now, June. So I mean, before the whole thing kicked off, so like eight nine months, right? Uh, but just on a weekly basis, every week for eight nine months, and it's just um, yeah, it's just it's, there's a lot that it brings. Is like you know, if you just sit down and just think about it a little bit, there's, there's a lot that you get out of it. And uh, yeah, I highly recommend it to anyone. Plus. Um, yeah, it was good to hear your approach on Ramadan as well, man, and how you like how you've tweaked and how you've adapted because that's mm. that's cool. It's good to know. Yeah, 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 man. It just comes with it. it comes with the time. I think sometimes you got to just uh, go slow to go fast, right? And uh, I'm looking at the time now, thinking, okay, it's twenty past five. I can just chill for a bit, get some things done in my room, and then go and train. 
and kind of have like an hour and a half slowly slowly get through my trading session not kill myself um finish with some shadow boxing just basic stuff and then come in shower and by that time it'll be time to open the fast you know what i mean so it's like you kind of time it right and uh yeah man you can you can, you can do well wicked bro yeah, all right buddy. we'll do it yeah, again definitely grin definitely definitely we'll chat soon, yeah, right? some other stuff we've got to chat about as well <laughs> yeah man yeah, yeah i tried to i tried to scroll through it halfway through i was like where's that list that you wrote because <laughs> yeah. on, on the chat i want you if i go on my phone out your chat will come up and yeah, i just man. saw that on there and i thought the, uh, what, what do i want to bring up the most on here and it yeah was the improv and i was like cool good i'm, oh. I'm glad we got the improv in man yeah yeah 100 percent. next time we're gonna to chat to you about your uh thoughts on mortality oh doubt I'm down. I'm down for that, but that's going to be an interesting. What? Because I've noticed one. you've said a few things in context to, with mortality in mind. So I'm like, oh, I'm interested. I want to know. I want to okay. know where you go with that. Down, man. Down. Come. Yeah, Good. Bro. Look after yourself, bro. Yeah, man. Take Much easy, love. man. I will see you. I will see you soon. Take it easy, man. Bye, bye. Thanks, bro.